Howdy, player. I'm Dayla, and I'm on the phones here at the Warm Kitten Hint Chat. Should you get stuck too long on a puzzle, you can find me in the game's pause menu. Oh, and before I go, on account of tutorials being, like, really boring, I just snuck a help note into Justin's inventory instead. Would you like to see that intro again, or would you rather just jump into the game? One intro coming up. Enjoy your game. Dash, go on, QP43. And then I found him, but with his head. Yes? His head was. It was blown straight off, Doc. Krapotilas. We're looking at a stone cold killer here, QP43. Yes, stone cold, Doc. And of course, I'm working on my revenge. Oh, of course. And are you making any progress? Oh, yes, I'm closing in on him, Doc. You can be certain of that. Gob, gob. <laughs> Not again, Clout. I've told you a thousand times, this is an all-vegan daycare. You're not allowed to cook rabbits. Go, go, go. Don't try to speak dinosaur, Clout. UK folk just don't have the capacity for it. Oof. And no sulking either. This is a happy all-vegan daycare. Hi, Julia. I think we need to talk. Let me stop you right there. Justin, I have the best news ever. I just took in this beautiful stray cat. Meet Oligarch. Isn't he just the cutest? Oh. Oh? Oh what? Oh. As in, oh, you didn't know I was allergic? Allergic? Really? Yeah. So, if we're serious about this whole moving in together business... This whole moving in together business? Mm-hmm. Well, good for you. Mm-hmm. 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 So, I guess it's either me or Oligarch. Your choice, Julia. So, Justin, I heard about you and Julia. I guess she's now out and about, so to speak, eh? Well, I wouldn't put it quite like that. I see. Maybe I'll run it by her instead. Wait a minute. Is that a dating site? Yeah. I thought maybe I should get a profile up on datamate.com. Stupid idea, though. It just makes me miss her more. All the profiles just remind me that no one compares to her. That's some... Um... Heartbreaking stuff right there, Justin. Peckish for a snack, eh? Yeah. I haven't eaten for days. It's time I snapped out of this thing and got back to living my life again. Starting with sniffing around for some leftovers. Add a boy, Justin. Hey, 
that thing has been in there since back in the 90s or something. I really wouldn't touch it if I were you. I sure don't expect this tinfoil bottom to cause any problem in the microwave or anything. Your confidence is an inspiration to us all here at the office, Justin. What the? Ay caramba! I guess mouldy onions from the 90s combined with tin and microwaves makes a one heck of a cocktail. I really must insist you do something about this mess of yours, Justin. Hmm. Got something specific in mind? Well, I'm not sure what we're looking at here. Maybe just wipe it off with a towel or something. Wipe it off with a towel? I'm pretty sure it's not a soup stain, Reefs. Okay, let's do this. I have decided to go and have a quick look around for that onion pie. If, for some reason, I don't make it back, tell Julia I went off on this great adventure. No need to mention the onion pie, though. Sure, I'll take care of Julia, should anything go wrong. Scout's honor. Maybe it's, when am I? Uh, hello there. Sorry to interrupt. You haven't seen any onion pies around, have you? I guess whoever is in there isn't very keen to talk, or is already munching away on that pie. Was that a caveman? Holy crap, I'm stuck in this place. <gasps> and now to bag myself another time traveler. I'll be a real slick about it too. Hey, time traveler, or should I say, Justin? Uh, yeah? I've been expecting you. Really? Mm-hmm. It took me many days of hard work to get things ready for your arrival. Well, sorry to cause you so much trouble. Oh, you will be sorry. Where I come from, we don't take kindly to unauthorized time travelers. No, sir. Uh, where did you say you come from? I come from the future. Well, I guess technically so do you at the moment, having just traveled back in time and all. But I'm from the real future. A future that would seem futuristic even to you. Man, I'm already slightly confused. This isn't going to be super confusing, right? Not really, no. I didn't really mean to travel back in time, you know. Hey, save it for the interrogation session. Interrogation session? Oh, don't jinx it. I got a real dramatic segue right at the end of this conversation. Oh, I see. I can't wait. What did you say your name was? I didn't. We agents are sly like that. Agents? Indeed. A special agent of the Pythonic Empire. The Pythonic Empire? That has a rather nasty ring to it. Well, we are hardly known for our kindness. We are known. Yes? For our extraordinary ruthlessness. Ay caramba! Ay caramba is right. Well, it was nice to meet you in all, but... Nice? 
meeting a Pythonic agent. I'll tell you what you're about to meet next. What? Your untimely demise. Hmm. So I know that's probably not meant for me, but I've got to say, that coffee smells great. Silence, prisoner. This is no coffee shop, and I sure ain't no barista bot. Though I'm often told I make an excellent brew. Okay, here's how it's gonna go down, time traveler. First, I'll power up the Interatron 300. Then we'll have our little session. And then... My untimely demise? Bingo! It's actually holding the keys in its mouth. What a tease. Psst. E excuse me, Mr. Caveman, sir. Maybe the cavemen haven't learned to communicate using language yet. Silence. There will be no interaction between you and your accomplice. Accomplice? I've never seen that guy before. Really? Because according to the chronology, a caveman was supposed to travel to your time. I caught that big guy just before you showed up, thinking he was the one. Hmm, I guess the real caveman must have escaped through the portal. I'm gonna have to send another agent to track him down. Gee, I wonder what that guy is doing in my office right now. Speak the lingo, huh? No worries, big fella. Your predecessor never said much of interest anyway. Welcome to the crew, my fuzzy looking friend. Gob gob. Eureka! I think I've got this English thing now. Now that I can finally express myself, there's no way that this caveman is ever going back to those weird dinosaurs back in my own time. Hey, Justin. Cavemen? Coexisting with dinosaurs? What are you on about? Whoa. You really let yourself go there, Justin. I mean, I know you've been missing Julia a lot, but like... Julia? Still can't stop thinking about her, huh? Well, I might actually have some good news for you. So here's the thing. I've been thinking a lot about the concept of time lately. It's like, there's really no reason you should feel sad about Julia. Not if you consider the grand scheme of things. Go on. Well, in the grand scheme of things, it's really not important who's feeling what or who's seeing whom at any particular time. Oh? Mm-hmm. You see, even if you guys had stayed together for the rest of your lives, your lives would only have added up to this teeny-weeny bit of time in the grand scheme of things anyway. So, any couple of any species breaking up or staying together turns out to be, well, a statistical non-issue, really. In the grand scheme of things? Right. Well, I'll keep that in mind. Thanks. I'm taking that thing. Okay, just give me some privacy while I put this thing on.
Hmm, these pixels might come in handy. Not bad. Hi, friend. I'm Clute. Ah, so you finally grasped verbal communication, huh? That's just swell, Clute. I'm glad that apron doesn't say, kiss the chef. Are you ever done stirring that coffee? Well, I like it just right, you know? Real smooth-like. I like those cufflinks. As do the ladies, Clute. As do the ladies. It's actually a picture of Animal from The Muppet Show. It sends the subliminal signal that under this dashing, civil exterior beats the heart of a savage animal. See you around, Reefs. Mm-hmm. Well, hi there, my scruffy-looking friend. Welcome to Convo Lift 200, from the company that brings you both elevation and uplifting conversation. Which floor would you like to go to? Bottom floor, please. Bottom floor it is. But first, let's just make sure you truly are an employee here at Mediocre IT. Using an amazing one gazillion megapixel face scan, Facial scan failed. All my megapixels tell me that you do not work here. Nice. Hmm. Is that you, Scruff Boy? Which floor would you like to go to? Bottom floor, please. Bottom floor it is. But first, let's just make sure you truly are an employee here at Mediocre IT. Using a rather limited number of pixels, it seems. Hmm. So I guess that's a face. Ah, whatever, Scruff Boy. Enjoy your ride. Oh. And by the way, someone is on their way up. Someone heavy. And metallic. Heavy? Metallic? Not sure I like the sound of that. Okay, so that caveman should be here somewhere. I'm going to park my caboose right here until he shows. At which point, things will get real dark. And twisted. Dark? Twisted? Crikey. Yuck! It stinks of sardines. Excuse me, could I interest you in this fine tin of sardines, sir? I never mean for these things to happen. Okay, now. Don't be scared, little buddy. Ah, oh, crap. Yoo-hoo! Mr. Pythonic Agent, sir. You do not, you who, an agent of the Pythonic Empire. Pythonic? Yes, Pythonic. I kinda like saying that. Pythonic. Don't it? I 
don't suppose you could just let me out of here? You suppose you're right? When I track down time travelers, I do things by the book. Incarcerate, interrogate, liquidate. I caramba! I caramba, is you right? So, what do agents of the Pythonic Empire do for fun? Well, we're all big fans of Agent Ruthless. Who? Agent Ruthless. He's a huge star back in my time. Has his own show on Netflix and everything. Would you like to have your own show too? Would I? I mean... Do you think I've got what it takes in terms of ruthlessness, I mean? Oh, you're ruthless! Well, I appreciate that. I can picture it now. Agent QP-42. The show that makes Agent Ruthless look like a mere amateur in the field of ruthlessness. QP-42. That's your name. Well, it's my serial number. Why? Oh, uh, no reason. What, you don't think it has a nice ring to it? I mean, I know it's not Agent Ruthless or whatever. It's a very nice name. Well, thanks for the chat. Yes, yes, very nice. You have reached the Pythonic Robotics Online, the one-stop shop for all your robotic needs. I'd like to report a faulty unit, please. I see. Could you tell me the serial number of the faulty unit, please? QP42. Mm. Let me check. Yeah, we do have that unit on file. Please hold while I take this unit out of circulation. What's this? Incoming transmission? Self-destruct? Crapotulus! Are you hearing this, time traveler? Sorry, what? You wouldn't have anything to do with this, would you? Oh, you mean the whole self-destruction thing? Well... Sorry and all, but you were going to liquidate me, you know? Well, let my final log message reflect that I was somehow compromised by unauthorized time traveler Justin Wack. And also, the Pythonic Empire would be wise to invest in a more modern power source for its interrogation devices. <laughs> There's a pin on it. Freedom! Okay, now to find my way home to my own time. Shouldn't be that hard for a resourceful IT support technician of my caliber. One water, coming right up. Hmm, not too sure how to work these. I see a Bluetooth symbol on the panel though. Hey, don't ever do it, kiddo. Nice dino suit, though. So, I know cave folk haven't really learned to speak yet, but 
Your son is making me feel a bit inadequate and weak here. Though, admittedly, this is not an entirely new feeling for me at the gym. All right. I feel I've gotten a bit stronger. OK. Now I feel even stronger. That's it. I feel ready to take on the world. Any more training and I'd have to apply for gun licenses for these here biceps. That sound. Oh, sorry, did not expect you to talk. Well, I'm Osric. I've never heard of cave folk speaking dinosaur. Didn't know you had it in you, to be honest. Having such a small noggin and all. I see. I mean, they've got to be pretty tiny, right? Not to sound mean or anything. Right. Anyway, you look like you're ready to go to the office. Yeah, I should probably get back to work. Just came down for a little shut-eye. The guys at the construction site are going to freak out when I tell them I met a talking cavey. You'll see, you'll be the talk of the whole village. What do you do when you're not taking a nap? I'm in charge of building the bleachers for the asteroid show. Asteroid show? Yeah, there's an asteroid coming down. We're all very excited. Nothing too dangerous, I hope. No, 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 no. We've got it all mapped out. All dinosaurs will be safe up in the mountains, front row seats of the crash site. And the cave folk? Only dinosaurs are allowed to get tickets for the asteroid show, I'm afraid. Oh. But you know what they say about eggs and omelettes, right? Right. Tell me about the other cave folk. Oh, we take good care of the little buggers. Within reason. They're all hanging out at the cave folk daycare. I'm guessing that's where you run away from, yes? Right. Cave folk daycare. Thanks for the chat. Cave Folk Daycare is just up ahead. You should probably get back there. Oh, before you leave... Yeah? Could you come just a little bit closer? OK. I just want to have a little sniff. A, a sniff? What's going on here? Wait. You guys don't eat Cave Folk, right? So, anyway, you should probably be on your way. QP42. My dear brother. I promise you that your death shall not go unavenged. I shall study your logs and start plotting my revenge immediately. It shall be a revenge of such epic proportions that I shall give it its own name. Revenge, I dub thee... Ruthless... Unbound! Let's have a look-see.
Crepopulous. That's a lot of hunting trophies. Hmm. The only thing I can make out is the plaque closest to the window. It reads, first prize in the category for best rabbit mating call goes to Abraxas the Illustrious for rub rubber hub hub, rub rubber hub hub. Hmm. The note reads, Dear Patience, my medicine shack is temporarily closed while I, MD Abraxas, am attending another glorious hunting expedition. Come again soon. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep, this guy is drawing up plans and schematics for catching animals, all right. He seems particularly interested in rabbits. I guess they're the popular prey in these parts. I'll scribble down the details in my notes. Mind if I borrow this thing? Whoa, a speaking cavey. You feeling all right? Well, thanks for asking. I, I do feel kind of lost, but I must admit this little adventure is kind of refreshing. Well, we better have the medicine dino take a look at you as soon as he's back from his hunting expedition. What's your name? Gee, I hate seeing doctors. But if you insist, my name is Justin. I'll make sure to put your name on his list, Justin. And now that you can speak dinosaur, will you tell the other caveys that hunting animals is strictly forbidden? Will they understand, though? Dinosaur, I mean. Hmm, I guess you're right. We'll make sure to keep an eye out for any cave folk trying to hunt or cook animals then. Will do. As the keeper of the cave folk daycare, I'm responsible for all the cavies in the village and there will be no eating of flesh on my watch. Got it. Anyway, about that seashell horn? Go ahead. Please don't blow that thing too early in the morning, though, or you'll wake everyone up. That thing is loud. Cool. Hmm. I don't think that's even a real apple. You guys don't eat cave folk, right? No, no, that's all hearsay. And the rumours of cavies going missing overnight are just that. Rumours. Is that not a real apple? This conversation is over. Yes, go on, QP43. And then I found him, but with his head. Yes? His head was. It was blown straight off, Doc. Crapotulous. We're looking at a stone cold killer here, QP43. Yes, stone cold, Doc. And of course, I'm working on my revenge. Oh, of course. And are you making any progress? Oh, yes, I'm closing in on him, Doc. You can be certain of that. You guys don't mind if I borrow this, right? Cool. Hey, you look familiar somehow. Maybe we're related. I'm from the future, you know. Anyway, so you're also building a bike, huh? Looks like you're a bit short on wood for the frame, though, huh? I'll see what I can do. I'm gonna throw a pebble at that bell and see what happens. Cool! A race! <laughs> hey, 
Guys. Yeah, I'm talking to you. Not sure why you're so happy when you had no one running against you. I kind of like it when people don't understand me. I feel I can finally speak my mind. So, anyway, I'm glad we had this conversation. You spread the word now. No showboating on my watch. Little did I know that the weed turned out to be a juicy carrot. Though, I am looking for some wood. I just don't have it in me to hurt one of the caveys. Maybe if I could just scare them away somehow. Excuse me? Make way for muscle man Justin Wack. To keep fit, I'm going to keep one of you in my pocket. That's better. <gasps> oh dear. Oh dear indeed. Hey there. This looks kind of complicated. Well, I, I suppose so. What are we looking at here? Well, that's my body on the floor. Or at least it used to be mine. You see, just as I was about to enter orbit, my ship collided with this massive asteroid. And when I woke up, I couldn't get the stupid hatch to open. Eventually, I ran out of food and had no choice but to transfer all of my biodata into my ship's computer. How did you end up on this planet? Oh, interstellar tourism. It's a hobby of mine. Earth was recently added to the list of destinations offered by the Transgalactic Travel Agency. This planet was supposed to be all the rage, you know. Sadly, the brochure failed to mention that blasted asteroid. Tell me more about this asteroid. Well, it was on a collision course with my vessel. Me bumping into it changed its direction somewhat. I sure hope it wasn't going anywhere important. Anywho, thanks for the chat. Anytime. I appreciate the company, you know. I'm Bob, by the way. Not sure what's in store for me now, to be honest. Actually, please don't go. I appreciate the company, you know. Oh, I'll be back soon, Holographic Bob. Uh oh. Oh, I'm taking this. Ouch! That just hurt my hand. I'm going to need something to get through the glass. Well, hello there. Set phases to stun. I should get this thing calibrated before I use it. Et voila! This is one perfect rabbit bait contraption. Looks like half of a rabbit trap to me. Now, if I could only combine it with a trigger contraption. Yes, the vines could probably be used as a remote triggering device for the trap. 
but I think I would need to combine them with something that could prop up the hatch until the trap is activated. Okay, let's see if I can get this thing calibrated. What can I say? A sudden burst of inspiration. But yeah, I think I've got the hang of how to use this phaser thingy now. I saw some Kafo cooking rabbits over at the Willow. They did what now? Leave it to me. I'll be right back. You guys are better not be cooking rabbits again. Folk gonna wise up to the virtues of vegan living, eh? Come back here, Orion. What? You think there's something down there all of a sudden? taken care of, I stomped out the fire good. Well, thanks for the chat. Keep it vegan, KV. Caveman, you say? Yes, that must be the time traveler. Take me to him now, and I shall exact my vengeance upon him. Ruthless Unbound shall be. Well, unbound, I suppose. Wait a minute. You're not going to hurt any of the cavies, are you? Well. Who are you, anyway, you one funny looking dinosaur, sir? Funny looking, am I? What is this place, anyway? This is hardly a fitting environment for kids, you know. It's not nearly ruthless enough. Ruthless? The caveys love it here. <sighs> How come you dinosaurs treat the cavemen like children, anyway? Don't you know they will soon rise up and overthrow your kind? Oh, Poppycock. Besides, it's my job to keep the caveys safe, so that they're all alive and well come the nightly feast. Oh, I see. You eat them. Well... We've got to survive somehow. We can't all be eating vegetables, you know. It used to be open season on cave folk, which made it very hard to catch any. But then the village council came up with this plan to earn their trust by opening this daycare. And now we can just pick them off one by one come nightfall. It's all quite civilized, really. Well, I say. That's actually surprisingly ruthless of you. But I must insist that you leave the talking one to me. It's a matter of honor. It's rendered my ruthless brother quite kaput, you see. Oh, I'm not privy to the nightly selection process. You would have to bring it up with the village council. There's probably some kind of form you'll have to fill in. Oh, great. 
paperwork. Hey, here's some more wood for that frame. I guess you can't expect any words of gratitude from someone who doesn't know how to speak. But I think his bike is now ready for action. Finally, those thugs have some competition. Okay, I'm gonna have to be careful here. I'm afraid no amount of weightlifting is gonna make me able to budge that thing. Godspeed, friend. Oh, is that for me? That's the reward. A twig, is it? Well, I'm on it. I would like to thank all those that helped me make this possible both of my opponents, and above all, my teammate, who I think I still see there on the horizon. Will you stop whining and just tell me where you went? I demand to exact vengeance upon him. I demand to put Ruthless Unbound into action. Wait, you actually gave your revenge its own name? Yes, what of it? No, no, just checking. Nice. That is one perfect set of a trap remotely contraption. Now, if I could only combine it with a bait contraption. Boom! A baited rabbit trap, complete with its very own remote controlled activation mechanism. Yeah, this will do nicely. Just give me a moment to set up this remote control beauty. Okie dokie, let's do this. Okay, so it's not quite the rabbit onslaught I was hoping for. Maybe if I try a mating call. Rub, rubber, hub, hub. Rub, rubber, hub, hub. Gotcha. So good to see you again. This awful robot character was here asking for you, looking to avenge his brother. Crapotulous! I'd better get a move on. I don't think my work here is done. I wonder what that caveman in my office is up to right now. This is the Pythonic Robotics Hotline, as seen on a smash hit show, Agent Ruthless, no less. 
I, I need to send out a general distress message. So, what's up? New episode of Agent Ruthless now available for streaming. Juicy. I'll transmit the message immediately. New episode? Well, I'm not usually one to leave my post. But... Maybe I'll just have a quick look. Like an in and out kind of thing. Hey, lift thingy. Yeah? Open up before I get all dark and twisted on your wiring. Easy, Tiger. I was actually hoping for a little more civility. AI to AI, I mean. Bah! My waste disposal protocol alone runs circles around your very primary matrix. Whatever, tough guy. Oh, I just know it's gonna be a good episode. Hang on, Julia. I'm coming home. It's a website called dateandmate.com. Whoever owns this computer has created a profile called G. Threepwood. Not much of a profile text, it just reads, Yeah, so I like a load of stuff, I guess. Like the band Rush are really cool. There's no profile picture either. Sure, I'll come up with some snazzy profile text. Just give me a minute. Okay, so I don't mean to brag or anything, but the profile text came out pretty, pretty good. All that remains now is a profile photo. And while this apron is better than my old pixels, I think I'm gonna need something more snazzy to do the profile justice. Listen to me, young man. Can you stream that show for me or what? This is Lenny speaking. Could someone please tell the robotic looking dude in aisle one to stop bothering the staff? Thank you. If you only knew my powers, Lenny, you would tremble before me. I should probably keep away from that particular place for a while. I say, what have we here? Hi, friend. I'm Clut. That rawness. That ruggedness. My friend, I see in you pure, untamed potential. Potential. Having or showing the capacity to develop into something in the future. Uh, yeah, quite. Develop into what, though? OK, I'll tell you what. You, my good man, are a diamond in the rough. Behind that utterly crude facade, there is a top-tier douchebag just waiting to get out. A douchebag, huh? How do we let him out? By bringing forth the full douchebag makeover. What's that? Well, let's see. You're gonna need three things. Oh, I totally saw that coming. What are they? I'll write them down in my notebook. Well, first, we're gonna have to do something about those clothes of yours. You're gonna need a proper lumberjack-style shirt. My delicate sensibilities tell me that red is a colour of your inner douchebag. Unfortunately, I'm all out of red checkered shirts at the moment, so you're gonna have to find one elsewhere. OK, then what? Secondly, you're gonna need some matching spectacles. Glasses, my friend. A pair of red glasses? OK. 
and then we're gonna give you a cut and a shave, which is not exactly for free. Lastly, you must bring me... Yes? One big bunch of monies. One big bunch of monies, I see. Yeah, come back when you have those three things and me and my barber will sort you out. We'll bring that sophisticated douchebag out for the whole world to admire. Okie dokie. Excuse me, could I have one of those computer sticks? Are you referring to the complimentary douchebag fashion branded USB keys? Mm-hmm. The new kind that goes with the latest pineapple computers. Mm-hmm. Oh, I suppose. Thank you. Hi, friend. I'm Clute. I'm Oliver. A little busy here, Clute. Wow, barber stuff. Mind if I borrow these for a moment? She's fast asleep. I suppose I can borrow them for a while. Good luck. Sorry, what's that? Good luck with opening your barbershop business. I mean, you've got to have a good reason for pinching all my barber stuff, right? Ah, well. Yes, I promise to make the most of them. Hmm, but no running with scissors. I won't. The plaque reads, Boldrus Romanticus. The oldest romantic stone carving known to man. Its origin remains a mystery to this day. Oops, the banana peel fell down the grid. But I feel confident that won't cause any problems later on. Okay, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna set up a profile on dateandmate.com. Jeez, I don't know about some of these guys though. Almost makes me miss Justin. I'm gonna give this thing a try though. Hi, friend. I'm Clute. They call me Leeby. So what is this place? Well, it's a pawn shop, isn't it? So I can sell you stuff for money? Yep. And you can also buy stuff. Be warned, though. Whenever I talk business, I tend to get a bit carried away. And sometimes my arms start to move around a bit. Noted. I don't want to say you've got a lot of junk here, but... Well, I'm grateful for that. These are all precious items looking for new owners. There's really no such thing as junk, you know. Apart from what elephants keep in their trunk, of course. Yeah, that makes total sense. That trunk thing you just said. Say one might need a big bunch of monies. Yeah? For a big bunch, you would have to give me something really expensive looking, though. Thanks for the chat. No worries. Welcome to stop by any time. Hmm, there's a lot of old videotapes here. Thanks for showing interest in those old things. It's not easy to move those things these days. 
Drop it right now. There's no way I'm letting that one go. A stone cold classic. Kind of creepy, to be honest. That thing is no longer playable. Oh, rest in peace, Eddie. Master of guitar tapping. That tape is actually still in working condition. This guy named Andre used to be in here all the time until he wore the tape out. OK, the tape is in the VCR. That's just a load of old demo tapes. Back in the day, bands looking to get picked up by labels used to drop them off. Hmm, interesting titles. First of all, who's your a and A mountain climber who plays an electric guitar? Yep, a stone cold classic right there. Interesting choice. I've never seen anyone pick that one up before. It's just some old blues band that no one seems to have heard of. You can keep that one if you want to. Thanks. We're fresh out of cassette players, though. Sold the last one to this old timer not too long ago. I know, I know. Gigadeth are totally the better band. Everyone would agree, if only they took the time to compare the whole discography. That's just a fact. Hmm, maybe Julia and Jonas? Looks like there's an air guitar contest about to go down in there. Oh, cash prizes. Hi, friend. I'm Clute. Not on the list. You didn't really look, though. No need. Got it memorised. You are not the caveman we are looking for. You are not the caveman we are looking for. Move along. Mover. Hey, nice try, buddy. Oh, wait a minute. That apron. You wouldn't happen to be the new waiter, would you? I'm going to say yes. Ah, why didn't you say so? I'm Mike the Bouncer. Hi, Mike the Bouncer. Mate, I think you're late. You best get in there right away. Let's hope that B didn't notice. What's up, Mike the Bouncer? All good, Clute the Waiter. All good. Hi, friend. I'm Clute. Hi, Clute. I'm Drake. You must be the waiter, right? Uh, any sign of that chicken? Hey, I promised to have a look. What's with the superhero outfit? Well, there's this convention in the hotel a couple of streets from here. I'm going as Pup Man. I just stopped by for some food first. A couple of hours ago. See you around, Drake. If I don't starve to death first. Got one. Hmm. Black, empty. Cyan, empty. Magenta, empty. Yellow, empty. Mustard is yellow. Sure.
my friend. I'm Clout. Ah, the new waiter. I'm Reginald, and I'm going to call you K-Man. Okay. That's an expensive-looking guitar behind you. You got that right. It's also the first prize in the air guitar contest. Nice. I'd like to sign up for that air guitar contest. So you think you've got what it takes, huh? Hey, if it's anything like dancing, I'm your caveman. Dancing? <laughs> you should know that I don't suffer fools on my stage. You've got to master all three guitar styles in order to have a chance of the prize. All three, huh? Yep. Chugging, blues and tapping. The whole enchilada. Hey, I've got this. I guess we'll see, won't we? I will make a public announcement when it's time for the competition. A poster outside mentioned something about a poetry slam. Oh, so you're a poet now, huh? Let's hear some poetry then. Well... So... Yeah, that's what I thought, Hotshot. Anyway, the poetry slam isn't going down until way later. It's like the last act, if memory serves. Okay, see you around. Hmm. Hey, I think I just saw B over by the bar. You better come up with a good excuse for being late, waiter. So, you're the new waiter, I take it? Well, hi, friend. I'm Clout. Well, you're also late. Sorry, I got mixed up in this time portal business. Oh, I see. Yep, that's how I ended up in this world. Which, by the way, is way better than where I came from. I mean, there's not a dino in sight, right? Right. So I take it you're offering me a career in this fine establishment? If you want to call it that. Wow, I've got myself a job. Introducing Clute, man about town. Welcome to Squids. See the guy with the superhero costume over there? He's not some undercover robotic agent, is he? Hmm? I don't know about all that, but I know he's been waiting for his food for about an hour or so. No worries, I've got this. Oh yeah, I almost forgot. You better put some salt on it first. Chef didn't salt it? Oh, I don't allow old Salty to touch the stuff. He oversalts everything. It's like his taste buds are immune to it. Okay, that might have been just a tad too much salt. Sorry for the delay, Pupman. Okay, okay, okay. So, anyway, enjoy. Okay, okay, okay. Finally, some superhero grub. And worst of all, the paramedics told me that if only he had started on that bottle before swallowing all that salt, he probably would have been fine. That's... that's too bad. Yep, too bad. Anyway, of course I'm going to have to fire Salty for this. Oh, are you sure he's to blame for this, though? Oh yeah, these are typical Salty shenanigans. Sad, though. I know how hard he tried to stay clean this time. Yeah, well, you know, it is what it is. Yep. I guess that about sums it up. Hey, while I deliver the bad news to Salty, why don't you clean up the place a bit? And don't forget to take out the rubbish. Typical youngsters tossing out perfectly good food. 
So I suppose I could sift through all the rubbish in that bin. If you think it's absolutely necessary. Hmm. All I found in there was that chicken bone that the superhero guy spat out. Okay, let's see if I can make this thing a little more interesting. Red checkered shirt. Check. Red glasses. Check. Let's try something else, shall we? Oh, uh, I I'm just going out on an errand. I'll be back, though. Man about town and all that, huh? Hey, you go do your thing, Clute. So, you're the new waiter, huh? Well, they fired me, if you can believe that. Yeah, I heard. And I'm so sorry about that. What, you had something to do with it? Relax, I'm just kidding. I'm salty, by the way. Hi, friend, I'm Clute, man about town. So, anyway. You're feeling kind of blue about that job, huh? Curious way of putting it, but yeah, you could say that. I'm not even sure how it happened, to be honest. I guess I must have hidden some salt in the kitchen and forgotten about it or whatever. Gee, I feel bad. Hey, I brought this on myself. I could never steer clear of the stuff. Nice boombox. Yeah, I picked it up in the pawn shop just the other day. I can't seem to find any of my old cassette tapes, though. Nice chatting to you, Salty. See you around, kid. Okay, that's the blues right there. Sit back and learn, kid. Hmm. I see. It's kind of slow and soulful. And it seems your lips must be shaped like the letter O. That's how it's done. Wow, what is that? I love that sound. Thanks a lot, dude. You really ought to know better than to break up a dude's riffage like that. Now my string is all kaput like. Riffage, eh? Well, chugging, really. Chugging? Right. Hmm. Could you show me some more of this chugging business? Well, since I like you here, and this whole animalistic kind of vibe you've got going there, sure, I'll teach you the art of chugging, as soon as I can get a new string for this old fiddle. OK, I'll see what I can do. Hey, Chugginola, try this. Hmm. That's a crazy heavy gauge string right there. Heavy as in good heavy? Well, let's find out. Oh yeah. This is like a new level of heaviness right there. Thanks, dude. Hmm. 
I think I'm getting the hang of this chugging business. Heavy, rhythmic and repetitive. Yeah, but the sound is just half of it. A good chug is just as much about the expression on your face. You've got to give it a good scowl, you know. Scowl, huh? Let me try that. That's some good chugging right there. A cool looking guitar pedal. Hey, there's batteries in it. Watch out, town. The sheriff just got some bullets in his six-shooter. Okay, let's have a look at this Van Halen live without a fret thingy. Wow, this Van Halen dude sure fiddles around a lot with both hands on the fretboard. And it seems to require keeping one's mouth wide open while doing it. Cool. I think I've got this tapping thing now. All right, B. Time for the big ear guitar competition. Oh, that thing? Just try and be a little more respectful to the participants this time, Reg. Hey, as long as they don't embarrass themselves on my stage, my stage is no place for riffraff. Sorry, can I just say, you look absolutely nothing like your profile picture, Mr. Stobart. Oh, that was just a ruse to lure you out of your domicile. And now that the cat is out of the bag, I know you are somehow connected to one of the time travelers. Tell me everything you know or I shall disintegrate you on the spot. Whoa. That's right. I'm ruthless, baby. So, were they both in cahoots from the start? Has the caveman tried to make contact? Tell me now or suffer the consequences. Silence, eh? Look, Stobart, I don't know what you're talking about. Well, luckily for you, you might still be valuable as bait for the caveman. Gee, I can't wait. So while you might be off the hook for now, know this. I'll be keeping a close eye on this town. Expect me in the shadows, lurking and scheming, until suddenly I shall emerge. To great dramatic effect, and so on. Yeah, I don't think the poetry slam is due for another two acts or so. I felt that went pretty well. See you again sometime. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, look who just walked through the door, ladies and gentlemen. I present to you a new ear guitar contender. Give it up for... The K-Man! I know, I know. He sure isn't much to look at, but let's give him a chance, folks. First guitar style, coming up. Sweet. Nice and soulful, just the way I like it. Sounds like the blues to me. Which is so soulful that you've got to shape your mouth like the letter O. Something like this. Downright cheesy to me, but let's hear the people's verdict. Really? You like that, folks? Okay, okay. So far, so good, K Man.
now for the second style. No! It sounds like it would require a whole lot of hands to pull that off. Sounds like tapping to me. Which is so technically demanding that you've got to keep your mouth wide open. Something like this. Looked total cornball to me. But let's hear the people's verdict. You like that, huh? OK, OK. So, let's see if you've got the stamina to bring this home, k okay, And finally, the last guitar style. Whoa, that sounds heavy. Sounds like chugging to me. Which requires a good scowl. Something like this. Looked kind of corny to me. But let's hear the people's verdict. What do you know? We have a winner, ladies and gentlemen. Of course, I knew it from the moment I laid eyes on him. Shower off. I gotta say, you were a lot less pathetic than I expected up there. Thanks. That means a lot coming from you. So what are you going to do with the expensive-looking guitar, K-Man? Oh, I'll think of something. Well, enjoy and uh, tell your friends about the Poetry Slam. It's going to be epic. Will do. Yo, Libby, have a look at this. Hmm. I have it on good authority that it is expensive looking. Well, it may be expensive looking. To a layman. To me, however, I've got to say it's not all that impressive. Well, I kind of had my heart set on a big bunch of monies. Oh, I bet you did. Tell you what, though. I'll trade your somewhat expensive looking guitar for... Yes? One of those rusty shovels over there. That's a genuine Jacobi's, a real high quality shovel. Okay, I guess. Deal! Okay. Nice doing business with you. Oh, by the way, we have a strict no-returns policy here in the shop. I sure hope this was a good trade. OK, let's find out what's down there. No returns, huh? Not fair. After all I went through to get here. First, I learned all those guitar styles. Only to have the shovel fall apart in my hands. Great. Another tiny dino. Probably here to gloat over my setback. Yeah? What?
dinos. Hi friend, I'm Clute. Hi there Clute. I'm Jason and this here's little Orion. Are you saying you are the master of this tiny dino? Come again. Is this dino bossing you around? Or have you revolted and overthrown your former master? Well? He's not bossing you around, is he? No. Good for you. Where I come from, they boss around people like you and me all the time, telling us what to eat, how to dress and whatnot. Eh, uh, okay. Why would you keep a tiny dino around? Oh, they're the best. Best at what? Enslaving cave folk? Well, he's good at burying stuff. Bones and the like. What? Are you saying he's actually burying body parts? Well, in a manner of speaking, yes. I knew it! Before you revolted, did he ever try to eat you? Well, as a puppy, he did chew on a lot of things. Never a good sign. Where I'm from, people like us tend to disappear overnight. Really? Yep, every morning there was one less of us around. It's not like I have any hard evidence, but let's just say that I never saw our dino masters eat anything. Yet they never seemed to be hungry during the day. That's quite a story. Mm-hmm. So even though this little Orion fellow may look harmless, I wouldn't turn my back on him if I were you. Take care, Jason. And remember, don't turn your back on that thing for a second. Eh, uh, okay. You have a nice day too, Clute. Hey, Dino. You like bones, huh? The dinos of this era. Such strange creatures. Whoa! I bet some coal was buried there like half an eternity ago. Wow! A real diamond! Someone must have squashed a whole lot of coal down there a huge while ago. Sorry, dude, no returns. So how do you like my diamond? Wow! Expensive looking enough for you? Yeah, okay. That's a massively expensive looking diamond right there. I suppose you want a big bunch of monies for such an item, huh? That sounds about right. Sorry, got a little carried away there. Hmm. Deal! Hey, I'm loaded. Yeah, but how many diamonds have you got, though? I've got one, and it's a big one. I bet this thing is worth ten big bunches of monies. At least. Ah, the douchebag in waiting. Got the stuff? Sure do. Oh, I love the shirt. Excellent cut. The glasses are fine too, if a bit sticky. Now let me just count the money. Okay, one big bunch of monies. Done. Now, are you ready to unleash that inner douchebag? Well, I suppose I am. Well then, let's get to work. Okay, whenever you're ready, Clue. Impeccable. 
Remarkable. Damn right, unfathomable. Hmm. I don't look stupid or anything, right? I shall pretend I didn't hear that. The profile still needs a profile photo. Okay, so let's do this. Okay, so I'm not sure about this new douchebag look, but the photo is now taken care of. I'd say the profile is done now. Hmm, what was that? Whoa, the dating site is going nuts. People seem to be going bonkers over that profile picture. I caramba! Mr. G. Threetwood, I say. Okay, I'm gonna bag this guy before anyone else beats me to it. Oh, what's this? A lady with blue hair? Ding dong. Meet up for a drink at Squids. Crikey. Larry, my steadfast surveillance has paid off. I just got a hot lead on my target. I will have to find a new spot to act as surveillance headquarters, though. This is Lenny speaking. Again, could someone please tell the robotic looking dude in aisle one to vacate the premises? On account of freaking everybody out. Thank you. You drive a hard bargain, Lenny but that's where there's mutual respect between us. Ah. Oh. oh, indeed. And also, welcome to the year 8021. No way! The rabbit took me too far into the future? Hmm, if a rabbit got me too far into the future, I bet a smaller rodent would get me back to my own time. Silence, maggot. I am Special Agent QP43, brother of QP42, if the name rings a bell. Oh, I see. Sorry about that. I, I mean, my condolences and all that. Silence, maggot. Prepare yourself for Ruthless Unbound. Ruthless what? It's the name of my revenge. Yes, I gave my revenge a name. What about it? Hey, whatever works for you, QP43. Since you're something of a slippery customer, I will personally keep my eyes on you while my colleague powers up the Chrono Wiper. The Chrono what? You heard me. The most ruthless device in the whole Pythonic Empire, capable of wiping out any trace of a person's existence from any timeline, in any parallel universe, for all eternity. Sounds handy. Silence, maggot. Hold right there, maggot. We suspected this curious kitchen appliance was somehow involved in your time-traveling hack. Tell me how it works, or I'll wipe you out right here and now. Well, you start by sticking your head in it. Hmm. Crapotulus! I'm looking through some sort of miniature portal. There's an office kitchen on the other side. How does it work? What do I do next?
Next up is the operatic phase. Let's hear your favourite aria. What? Opera? Really? Yes, I assume you have some operatic experience, right? Well, naturally. Good start. Keep it going. What's all the racket about? <gasps> oh, not another one. Go away! Phew, the bad man went away. Uh, excuse me, Mr. Hipster Guy? Hi, friend. I'm Clute. Hold on. You're the guy who stepped out of the portal back in my time. Wait. You're the caveman who got me stranded in the past. Sorry about that. But when I saw that portal, I figured it was my one chance to escape the tyranny of the dinosaurs. Yeah. Well, I have noticed that the dino cave folk dynamic back in your time does seem rather odd. Anyway. I need to get back to my own time so I can patch things up with Julia. I've been through a lot since I last saw her, and I can't wait to talk to her again. If only this mini portal were big enough for me to step through. Julia? Oh. What? Julia's hair wouldn't happen to be blue by any chance? Oh, you saw the photo on my desk. Yep, it's blue all right. Well. Cyan, really. Why do you ask? No reason. So, listen. Since I left you stranded and everything, is there anything I can do to help out? Hmm. Thanks for asking, Clute. Maybe, if we work together, we can solve this thing. I guess you're trying to get home too. Oh, I actually prefer it here, where the dinos are so tiny they can't boss me around. Oh? Well, maybe I can find a way to get rid of the dinos back in your time. I don't think they were ever supposed to live alongside cave folk in the first place, to be honest. Hmm. Imagine that. My own time without the dinosaurs. We cave folk would be free to do whatever we wanted. And I wouldn't mind getting out of these silly clothes. Hey, Justin. If you could get rid of them dinos, I would love to go back to my own time. Okay, I'll see what I can do. Woohoo! It's co op time! Yay! Oh, and by the way, this micro portal seems kind of stable. If I throw you this pack of gum, does it show up on your side? Yep, I've got it. Great! This means we can use the micro portal to swap items. Roger that, co op buddy. Hey, I feel good about this, Clute. I feel things might actually work out. Hey, Chuggin Ola. No longer Chuggin? Sorry, dude. My hopes and dreams got crushed by the corporate machinery. I'm working for the man now. Really. Oh, the man. Yup. Have an envelope, dude. Okay. Here's how it works. Opening up a savings account with Piggy Bank is easy. You just put a coin and your contact details in this pre-stamped envelope and drop it in the post. Your future you will thank you. Sorry, they make me say that to everyone. It's torture, really. I feel for you, Advertising Ola. I feel for you. Nice chatting to you, Salty. See you around, kid. Mind if I take that can? Maybe later, waiter. 
Excuse me, waiter. What's up, Salty? I'd like to order a snack, if I may. Uh, you being the waiter and all? The service at this place could use some work, you know. You just name it, Salty. What can I get you? Well, I need something to complement this fine can of Le Chef's salt water. Something a little sturdier than peanuts, but not quite a full meal. Hmm. How about a nice soft boiled egg? Sure thing, Salty. One soft boiled egg coming right up. Hi, I'm Clute. And I got Justin stranded in another time, and now he misses you like crazy. Wow, that's a lot to unpack right there. So you know about my ex, Justin? I do know Justin, and I know he's missing you like crazy. Wait, are we talking about the same guy here? Because the Justin I know always had a really hard time expressing his feelings. Really? Then I guess you haven't read his poetry. He writes poetry now? I'm hesitant to take a look at it, but I'm not sure I can ignore it either. OK, let's see. Julie, Julie, don't be so cruelly. Come back to Justin, the one to put your trust in. Yep, pretty powerful stuff. Powerfully cringy, but I do recognise his handwriting. So, tell me what happened. Start from the beginning. OK, sit back and enjoy this informative narrative. So, there you have it. Wow. So do you guys have a plan on how to get back to your own times? Well, we're still working on that one. But if we do get him back, is there any chance you guys could ever become a couple again? Hmm. You know, it's not like I don't miss him, even more so after I started dating, to be honest. But the fact remains, he's allergic to cats. His nose starts running and then he gets all rosy around the cheeks. And little oligarch really needs me, you know? You should have seen the state he was in when I found him. So he's allergic to cats, huh? Don't worry. Justin and I are on the case. If you say so, Clute. Hi, a name tag. I'm going to put this on. I think I saw the doors automatically opening when they detected it. Ahem. Status report, please. Oh, Special Agent QP-43. She slipped into an organic disguise resembling your main suspect. Very cunning, if I may say so, sir. Mm-hmm. What's going on here? Well... I'm currently running some very important diagnostics here on this terminal, sir. Yes, very important stuff indeed. I'm not just standing around waiting for the next episode of Agent of Ruthless to start streaming. Honestly, I'm not sure. See that you don't. Yeah, sure. I mean, no, sure. I mean, just as you say, sure. Greetings, Special Agent QP-43. Status report, please. I'm monitoring the development of the top-secret Invertitron project, sir. And keeping an eye on Ori Inter Lake, of course. Yes, keep a close eye on him. Humans are not to be trusted, you know. My eyes shall be even more vigilant from now on, sir. Excellent. Carry on. Brilliant suggestion, sir. At once, sir. Hi there. You look a bit... Organic to be working in a Pythonic lab, no? Hi there, Special Agent QP43. I'm Lake. Though my formal title around here is Lowly Intern Lake. 
So, what are you guys working on? We're working on this amazing Invertitron device. Though what it does is still top secret, I can tell you that when it's ready. It will perform unspeakable acts of horror in the service of the Empire. Excellent. You wouldn't be working to overthrow the Empire from within, right? What? No, I'm just doing my bit for the Empire, man. No reason to panic, just an innocent question of a special agent nature. Oh, now I get the disguise. You're conducting some sort of covert operation, looking for human infiltrators. I am not at liberty to either confirm or deny that statement, lowly intern Lake. Cool. I don't think you're going to find any infiltrators around here, though. I mean, all my colleagues are programmed to be almost annoyingly loyal to the Patriarch. The Patriarch? Yes, the Pythonic Patriarch. Ah, yes, of course, the Pythonic Patriarch. Talk to you later, Lake. Yes, sir, Special Agent QP43. I can't get to it. Hmm. Did I just slide by a secret floor in the middle of the building? Whoa, is that what I think it is? The plaque reads, all hail the Pythonic Patriarch. In his shadow, we squander our lowly existence. I don't know about all that, but the bubble thing is sure make me want to go and buy a soft drink. I guess I don't have much money to my name in this era either. So, what's up? You know, just pushing the merchandise. Hmm. What kind of merchandise are we talking about here? Well, why don't you have a guess? Oh, is it... inventory items? That's a strange thing to ask. You might say I carry some dangerous cargo. I'll show you, if you're ready. Okay. Flowers. Huh? I take it the powers that be don't approve of your merchandise? You haven't heard? Flowers are considered a sentimental remnant of the past. A past they want us to leave behind. So whatever floral bliss you were hoping for, I can't help you right now. It's just not safe to do business with that thing hovering about. Hmm, looks like a pair of sticky gloves. Welcome to Fantastic Studios Holistic Hospital System. So, what can I do for you? What does the name tag say? Special Agent QP43? Hi. Yeah, that's me. I'd like to make an appointment to see a psychotherapist, please. I see. Let me get Dr. DR22's assistant online for you. This is Dr. DR22's assistant. 
when would you like to see the doctor? Well, as soon as possible, really. I see. And what might I say this is about? Well... I feel this desperate need to look at ink blots on paper and have someone listen to my reaction. Acute case of psychological trope syndrome. Noted. Okay, Special Agent QB43. I'll call for you when Dr. DR22 is ready to see you. I'd like to make an appointment to see a doctor, please. I see. Let me get Dr. DR13's assistant online. This is Dr. DR13's assistant. When would you like to see the doctor? Well, as soon as possible, really. I see. And what might I say this is about? Well... I've got a rather severe case of cat allergy. Acute case of naivety concerning the powers of modern medicine. Noted. Okay, Special Agent QP43. I'll call for you when Dr. DR13 is ready to see you. You guys never seem to talk at the same time. Can't you all just share one monitor? Now you're just talking crazy. Talk to you later, monitor people. Be safe, Special Agent QP43. suck up the fuel through that thing? I guess. Nice. The flamethrower is ready for action. Nice. A half-empty, pitch-black pint of stout. Hey, the pitch-black pint of stout looks like a perfect match for the black slot. Hi, friend. I'm Clut. This is Lenny speaking. Could someone please tell the customer in aisle one not to bother the staff? Thank you. Okay, now, don't be scared, little fishy. What the f do you think you're doing? Hands off the fishbowl, face. Boy, that's a lot of profanity for just one dialogue. That fish looks a bit bored, no? Sushi is just fine, thank you, schmuck. Sushi? You're not planning on eating that fish, right? Well, maybe I am, maybe I'm not. Oops! This is Lenny speaking. There's been an incident in aisle one. Staff to aisle one. Staff to aisle one. Bring them up, please. Thank you. Like I ain't got more important stuff to do. I was in the zone too. Just a load of confusing code. Looks like the language is called Python. And the file being edited is called agent.py. I'm going to take real good care of you, Sushi. That should do it. Now, where was I? Oh, yeah, the taking over the world part.
Okay, sushi. It's not perfect, but it's way bigger than your current bowl. Beautiful. And to honor this moment, I'll refrain from cracking a cheap joke right now. Having said that, you should feel right at home with all those coins down there, you being a goldfish and all. Sorry about that, Sushi. Red button. Presumably used for the placing of intergalactic pizza-related, possibly also kebab-related, orders. Horizontal floor. Presumably used for standing and or walking. These cylindrical tubes served as reverberation resonators for this musical instrument known as galaxy organ. Deceased extraterrestrial. One. Designation, space captain. Origin unknown. This cylindrical area, known as a silo booth, served as the ship's main communication center. Hmm. Sorry about this, Bob. Is that an alien bone? Maybe. Keep that thing away from him. My buddy the pug only chews on human bones. Hey, Dino. Fancy another bone? They may have forgotten how to talk, but burying innocent bodies still comes naturally to them. Okay, let's see if there's something down there. I found some kind of tray down there, with something super funky inside of it. Let me open this thing up. Yuck! That cheese smells horrible. Come here, little one. Gotcha! Okay, let's go home. Hmm. I'm back in the past? So, 
If a mouse takes me too far into the past and a rabbit takes me too far into the future, I guess something in between a mouse and a rabbit should take me home. Okay, according to my calculations, it shouldn't be long now until the Great Asteroid Show. Hey, Osric, you'd better open up the mountain for public access. Okay, I'll take down the roadblock, boss. But I'm not touching that dodo. That thing is scary. Okay, let's have a look at today's patient list. Huh? Justin, a cavey who seems to have learned to speak dinosaur. Make sure he hasn't learned too much about you know what. A talking cavey? That's preposterous. But I guess I'd better have a look at this. Justin! I'm ready to see you now, Justin. Nice! The spacesuit is now intact! Hi, I'm Justin. Hmm, the speaking cavey, yes? That's me. Monkey see, monkey do, yes? Something like that. So, are you some kind of healer? Uh, I am not some kind of a healer, no. I am the illustrious M.D. Abraxos. I am THE healer. Oh, sorry. I shall give you my diagnosis now. Oh, that was quick. You may have learned to speak dinosaur. But as a side effect, it seems you have gone blind. Oh? Well, clearly you must be blind. Not to understand that I am indeed a healer when there are sick patients waiting in line for a guy dressed in scrubs. Ha. Huh. Right. But I suppose that could all be down to the size of your brain, yes? I suppose so. Yes, I can see we have nothing to fear from you, little Kavy. That's an odd thing to say. Well, I imagine a great deal of things must seem odd to such a small brain. What's with the room next door? You stay away from that door, you hear me? That's my private hunting lodge. No cadies allowed. Could you perhaps cure my cat allergy? I get headaches, my nose starts running and my cheeks get all rosy. Cat allergy, huh? There's a brew for that. Really? Oh, don't tell me. It needs a few ingredients though, right? It does. Three to be specific. And you just happen to be out of all three at the moment, yes? No, actually. Oh? The brew for curing cat allergy consists of 103 ingredients, if you must know. 100 of which I happen to have lying around. Okay. Just tell me the missing ingredients, Abraxas. So first of all, I'm going to need a sample of fur from the type of animal you're allergic to. Ah, that actually makes sense. Then I'm going to need some hot chamomile tea to mix up the brew. That makes a lot less sense, but go on. And of course, the final ingredient is... Yes? A touch of space dust. Ah, I see. Just a touch of space dust. Nothing else? Nope. That should do it. As a hunter, do you have any tips on taking down that dodo? 
Oh, that thing is too vicious a beast even for me. You've got to be really sly to knock that thing out the box. A dino's got to know his limitations. I know it's easily spooked by loud noises, though. Makes it stick its head down that empty hole. I remember it being really scared of the loud roar of a bear that I once defeated. I keep the bearskin rug in my hunting lodge. Well, I shan't take up any more of your time, Abraxas. Hmm. Nah, he's busy waiting for that show. A load of really old hairstyle magazines from like the 50s or something. I guess the more modern the waiting room, the older the magazines. Wow, one heck of an episode. Well, better get back to working on the Invertatron. Got to have an operational in time for the Patriarch's visit. Wait, did I remember to log off? Meh, it'll log off automatically soon enough. Look at me, as dangerous and suave as Agent Ruthless himself. Error. Can't open sound.cfg file. Error. Meta stack overflow. Hmm. Okay. The whole show was just a series of explosions with some incoherent tough guy catchphrases mixed in. Hmm. Hmm. I don't get it. Just a load of stock footage of factory assembly lines. Hmm. If this one is anything like that other one, I think I'm going to pass. Hello, world. Welcome to Drone Manager Pro. Please select Command. All drones are online. Please hold while checking firmware version of all active drones. Drone firmware update found, version 0.5.2. Are you sure you wish to update the firmware of all active drones to the latest version? Please hold while updating all active drones to the latest firmware, version 0.5.2. Wireless update failed. Error message. Guru meditation. Oh, 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 four dot. Oh, 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 a, a, c, o.
Looks like the coast is clear, my flower-pushing friend. So it seems. So, what kind of floral bliss are you looking for? Roses, tulips, daisies, posies. I've got all your cravings covered. Hmm. You got any dandelions in there? Sorry, I don't deal in weed, friend. You got any violets in there? Ah, down with the violet fever, huh? Sorry, all out since yesterday. I can't keep them in stock. They're so popular. You got any chamomile in there? Oh, you want the hard stuff? I might just have some chamomile, but that stuff doesn't come cheap, you know. But I'll trade you some if you've got something exotic for me. Wanna trade this sunflower for some chamomile? Whoa, you've got sunflower? I thought those all disappeared with the old world. You've got yourself a deal, friend. You got any insect repellent in there? Sorry, I can never keep them in stock. I have this customer who buys every can as soon as I get my hands on one. Later, dude. Later. Okay, the hole is now filled with a big rock. Hmm. I guess technically it's impossible to do anything illegal here. Oh, the things I choose to carry around. A graduation certificate made out to M.D. Abraxas, the illustrious. I guess M.D. stands for Medicine Dino. A graduation certificate made out to M.D. Abraxas, the illustrious. Hmm. It's a framed news article telling the story of old Rory Gallagher, a huge bear that used to terrorise dinos, cave folk and dodos with its crazy loud roaring. Old Rory must have had the greatest pair of lungs in history, says M.D. Abraxas, the hunter that managed to overpower the beast while on his lunch break. Listen up, little man. You talking to me? Most perceptive. Tell me about the weight that you've got working here. Huh? You better back off, friend. Hmm. Unfortunately, I'm not allowed to contaminate the timeline by rubbing out people not directly related to the investigation. That is to say, insignificant people. Yeah, whatever. Listen up, Buster. That's no ordinary weight that you have working here. Well, maybe I ain't no ordinary bouncer. Well, maybe I ain't no ordinary agent, then. Well, I guess we're all pretty special people, then. Okay, this conversation is getting weird. Just tell your so-called waiter that I have a proposition for him. One he will not be able to refuse. One water, coming right up. Thank you. 
Fits perfectly. Doesn't seem to work. Okay, so I might have overdone the inflation part a little. Okay, that was crazy loud. Hey, is it true what that strange fella said? Huh? What did he say? He said that you're from the future and that we dinosaurs will soon go the way of the Diploceraspis. Hey, I'm just a cavey. I don't really know stuff. I don't think you can make tea out of the whole flower. Okay, some ground chamomile coming right up. Okay, that's chamomile tea right there. Not very hot, though. Yoink! I say, is that a meteor you're studying? A talking cavey? Amos is not impressed. And no, it's not a meteor, it's an asteroid, obviously. Oh, I'll try to remember that. Any reason we should be worried? Define we. <laughs> Keep your nappy on, cavey. All dinosaurs should be safe here up on the mountain. As for you cave folk, though... Yes? Well, let's just say it's heading directly for Cave Folk Valley. Ay, caramba! If you're referring to the feast afterwards, I agree. Ay, caramba! Plenty of Cave Folk for everyone. Oh, wait! Maybe I shouldn't have said that! Interesting. Looks almost like a bungee cord and a safety harness. I'm gonna put that spacesuit on, just in case this thing actually works. Not the most pleasant landing, but at least my glasses are still intact. If my finger were just a little longer, I would have actually touched that asteroid. Oh, hi again. Wanna help out, huh? That's cute, but I'm afraid it's a little out of your capacity. On account of your noggin being so small and all, some kind of pet detective? Or are you actually looking to buy that carrier? 
I'll let it go for just a small bunch of money! Oh, sorry, got a bit carried away again. I'll stick to the detective work for now. Have you got the allergy stuff I asked for? Sorry, I haven't checked off all the items on my list yet. And yet you choose to strike up a conversation with me just like that? Fascinating! Welcome back, Special Agent QP43. So, uh, about that psychotherapist? Uh, Dr. DR22 will see you when he's good and ready. I'll call out your name, Special Agent QP43. You won't miss it. So, about that doctor? Dr. DR13 will see you when he's good and ready. I'll call out your name, Special Agent QP43. You won't miss it. Talk to you later, monitor people. Be safe, Special Agent QP43. That pointy finger thingy. Keep talking. I might be willing to take it off your hands. Oh, I'm sure you would. That thing is in mint condition, though. And it can be yours, provided you give me one medium-sized bunch of monies! Sorry, got a little carried away there. I'll think about it. A pre-stamped envelope for opening up a savings account at Piggy Bank. It says to put your contact details and a coin in it to open up a savings account at Piggy Bank. Okay, the business card is in the envelope. Warning label reads, content is flammable. No, really, we aren't kidding. Nice, that coal is shiny with super flammable hairspray. Okay, let's light this sucker up. The coal is kind of hot, but it still needs something to spread the heat into a nice glow. Well, well. Look at me making up fires like it ain't no thing. I'm learning a lot here. One chamomile tea coming right up. Sure. How long would you like me to boil this egg for? That should do it. Hey, Clue. 
What's up, Mike the Bouncer? This strange-looking guy's been lurking around asking questions about you. Oh? Hmm. But don't worry, mate. I've got your back should things get ugly. Oh, that's much appreciated, Mike the Bouncer. Come out and face me, lurker. I'm not afraid. You will be. You will be. Whoa, what the heck was that? Just verifying your identity with my genetic X-ray scan. Pretty cool, huh? Yeah, that was pretty cool. And just as I thought, identity verified. You're the rogue caveman. Well, maybe I am, maybe I ain't. <laughs> my genetic X-ray scan doesn't lie. It's more than 100% accurate. That's right, we add percentages in the future. Allow me to introduce myself. I am QT40, not pronounced QT. And I happened to witness that little encounter between you and Julia in there not too long ago. Oh. Oh yes indeed. You see, I've been watching you. My expertise in covert operations is, I believe the saying goes, off the hook. Go on. Yes, well, I have just one question about you and Julia, if you don't mind me asking. Mm-hmm. My question is this. Now that I know where Julia is, what's to stop me from walking right back in there and disintegrating her on the spot? And to be perfectly clear, I am authorized to do so. Well... The fact that you may have developed some rather confusing feelings regarding her? <laughs> Motion denied. So tell me. Are you at all familiar with the term double agent? Double agent? An agent who pretends to act as a spy for one party while in fact acting on behalf of an enemy. Well put, double agent KLO-1. What? KLO-1? I'll never work for the bad guys. You will, unless you want to be responsible for her demise. Well, I've got to say, these are no gentlemanly tactics, Cutie. Don't call me Cutie. It's QT40. And yes, admittedly my tactics are on the ruthless side, but nonetheless, we shall be working together, you and I. In fact, I have a mission for you. But this is hardly the place for a mission briefing. The walls have ears, KL01. You might not have noticed it, but there's a rather big fella standing behind you. To keep things properly covert and professional, I will plant the details about your briefing in an unspecified rubbish bin. Rubbish bin? Shush, Kalo One. The walls have ears. But yes, a rubbish bin. Oh, and don't try to follow me. You see, I am as elusive as the wind. Always watching from afar, always ready to strike from the darkness. To great dramatic effect. Oh, jeez. I don't know about this whole double agent business. This is quite the predicament I'm in. Enjoy your egg, sir. Finally! Yeah, very nice. But the shell is very hard. Could you maybe help by taking the top off for me? If you've got something sharp, maybe. Oh. I'll see what I can do. One cracked egg coming right up. Okay. Oi, this is one exotic looking egg. I'm perfectly boiled too, given the size of this thing. Okay, I don't know where you got that thing. But that egg was delicious. I've never tasted anything quite like it, to be honest. I'm a bit surprised about the salt, though. Or should I say, lack thereof? It just seems like a bit of an oversight, you know? I mean, my name is Salty. I got fired for supposedly oversalting the food. Not 
to mention I'm drinking salt water out of a can here. Well... It honestly never occurred to me. Is that so? Interesting. Anyway, I've finished my can of Le Chef's salt water. Ah, don't mind if I do. Hello. Thanks for recycling, mate. Here's your change. Thank you, Lenny. OK, the coin is in the envelope. I'd say this envelope is ready for posting. The letter is in the post box. Wow! Cash! One medium-sized bunch of monies! Sorry, got a little carried away there. For that, I can offer you one foam finger. I'll take it. Enjoy. Maybe I'll be able to reach that thing using the foam hand. Boom! The foam finger now has a touch of spice dust on it. What the? It looks like the trajectory of the asteroid has been ever so slightly altered. And now it looks like it's heading straight for this very mountain top. Where all the dinos will be gathered to watch the asteroid show. I guess the birds should be able to fly away in time. And the crocodiles won't be able to make it up the mountain in the first place. But as for the rest of us, this spells certain doom! So that's how it happened. Have you got the allergy stuff I asked for? Sure do. Sure took you long enough. Okie dokie, give me a minute to whip up the strange brew. Sure. What? Really? That's what you call the brew? <sighs> okay, have a swig of this. 
that was utterly, utterly disgusting. I really hope that did the trick, because I think I'll be tasting that strange brew for the rest of the day. Did the trick? Are you questioning the healing power of the illustrious Abraxas? Oh, not at all, Abraxas. Good for you. I shall forgive your doubtful nature on account of that tiny brain of yours. Now be gone with you. Look, I don't suppose you could give me something tangible like a paper or something? Like a clean bill of health or whatever? That doesn't sound like medicine dino business to me. Totally empty. Oh, except for this little folded note. Hmm, it reads, Well done, KL01. For your mission briefing, meet me by the fountain. I shall be wearing a disguise, but you shall know me by my inconspicuous looking hat. And don't be late. Julia's life depends on it. Now destroy this note, or I'll definitely disintegrate her. Moo ha 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 ha. Okay, note destroyed. Ah, you recognize the hat. Excellent work, KLO-1. Now for your mission. We want information. 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 You won't get it. By hook or by crook, we will, KLO-1. I am not a model number. I am a free caveman! <laughs> okay, now that that's over with, your mission is to extract the address of her domicile and report back to me. What? What do you mean? Find out where she lives. Julia? Yes. Ever heard of a phone book? Do not question my methods, KLO-1. These are tried and tested covert tactics. Having gathered the intel, meet me here for a debriefing. I don't feel right about this. Objection noted, and filed under you for utterly irrelevant. Be seeing you, KLO-1. So, where did you say you live? Uh... I'm not sure I did that. Ah, cool. There... Uh... uh would you excuse me for a second? Sure. We can't tell her that. Cutie might actually kill her. I'm just not ready to take that risk. You were saying? Well, it's the darndest thing, Julia. I totally forgot what I was about to say to you. Okay. Anyway, see you later, Julia. Sure thing, Cloot. Let's see if I can fish out some of those letters through the letter slot. Here's a few I managed to get out. The note reads, Dear Steamy Games, Here's your 30% profit for hosting my game on your servers. I guess you all have some really expensive servers. 
It reads, I can't thank you enough for Alfonso's secret. Not only did my hair grow back, it also moved my hairline back to its original position. Looks like someone is taking out an insurance policy for a new pet. The sender's address is Julia Voorhees, 5 Fountain Square. Got it. The packaging slip says 1, 1, book AI programming using the Python programming language. KL01, have you got the intel on Julia's address yet? She lives right where we're standing, 5 Fountain Square. Aha. Uh -huh. Well, I always thought that entrance looked suspicious. Excellent work, KL01. Now that we know, it's time for you to once and for all prove your loyalty to the Pythonic Empire. What? What do you want me to do now? Oh, nothing serious. Just break into her apartment and snoop around a bit. You know, for clues and whatnot. No way. Oh, don't make a fuss, KL01. She's over at Squidge anyway. And I'll be posted right here, keeping watch for my old buddy, KL01. I won't do it. You say that, but I think we both know you'll soon be back here with a report, yes? You've got the spying business in your blood now. And it all came so naturally to you that you're wondering how you could ever have lived without it, yes? No, no, it's not like that at all. Boy, I can't believe I'm actually doing this. Who am I kidding? I can't do this. Okay, that felt so wrong. And also, I feel I should get rid of the evidence. My prints are all over this crowbar. KL01, you got the intel. So I reluctantly did what you asked me to, only to find... nothing of interest. Oh, KL01, you simply haven't mastered the art of snooping yet. I bet there were tons of clues you just didn't think about. Tell me everything you saw in there. Well... I think she had a pineapple computer in there. Oh, vanity, your name is Julia. What else? There was definitely a cat in there. You fancy yourself as some kind of pet detective now, KL01? Keep your eye on the ball, Agent. Anything that could be connected to Justin and the time traveling? It was kind of messy in there. I did not send you on a top secret mission to determine her level of domestic sanitation, KL01. Focus, man! I saw some posters on the wall. Posters, eh? What of? Various bands, I believe. Hmm, yes, that does fit her psychological profile, doesn't it? Any band in particular? I think I saw a poster of The Cure in there. I see. Yes, this is consistent with her profile. Definitely indicating a somewhat moody, dare I say it, darker disposition. It wasn't the Disintegration album, was it? The poster, I mean? Possibly. Oh my. I do so love that album. Especially the title, Disintegration. A woman after my own heart, she is. Oh? Oh yes, I disintegrate people all the time, you know. Hmm. Well, I can't stand around talking all day, KLO one well done on the double agent business and all that. Now I simply must see her again. I seriously hope my days as a double agent are now over. Okay, I feel a little better about my chances of getting away with my break-in now. I sure hope no one ever finds that thing. Oh, the ball 
boredom of this place. I wonder if the other Molitor people ever get bored. They always look so busy. Calling Special Agent QP43. Dr. DR13 will see you now. Calling Special Agent QP43. Welcome back, Special Agent QP43. Dr. DR13 will see you in his office now. Step right in. Dr. DR13, I presume? Indeed. Greetings, Special Agent QP43. Wow, impressive human disguise. The organic matter looks convincing even to me. The guys in the lab sure can pull off some impressive stuff. They sure can. All I need now is a clean bill of health for this human, and I'm ready to go off on my next mission. Oh, that shouldn't be a problem. If you could just produce a fresh urine sample. Oh? Oh yes, the organics are a funny bunch, you know. Okay, I'll see what I can do. Thanks, Doc. Okay, I'll be back in a while, Oliver. And remember, the safety of the secret safe is now in your hands. No worries, Mr. Alfonso. The secret safe is safe with me. One coffee, coming right up. How's it going? Actually, I'm not really sure where to go with this haircut. I could do with a little inspiration. Might you be interested in these? Whoa! These look like the real deal, from like back in the 50s or something. Mind if I take a closer look at these, Clute? You go ahead, Oliver. Hey, Oliver, want me to help out a bit? Mmm, these are great. He seems preoccupied. I'm gonna help him out. Ooh, I think I'm gonna be pretty good at this. I mean, it's not like I haven't been carrying around a load of barber stuff for a while. I can't wait to show Oliver my work. Huh? Show me your what now? What the? I know, pretty good, right? Now do you get why I was so keen on borrowing your barber stuff? Right. Okay, you best look away, Clue. I'm gonna have to get something from the secret safe. Ay, caramba. Okay, you can look now, Clue. It's all taken care of. Whoa! How did it all grow back so fast? It's called Alfonso's Secret, and it packs one heck of a hair growth formula. Incredible! Yep, it's strong enough that even your children and grandchildren will have amazing hair growth. You know what, Clue? Having seen your work, I'm gonna let you keep that can.
Hmm. All alone with my thoughts for a while. Okay, finally time for a well-deserved cup of coffee. Ah, good old QP42. Sure knew how to make an excellent brew. Now, let's see about that other thing. The thing is, I just can't do it while anyone is waiting. Could you promise to look away and think of something else for a while? Thanks a lot. I got the sample. Okay, Doc. I got the sample. Excellent. I'll be right back with an analysis. Good news. You're all clean. Really? That's fantastic. I can't believe that strange brew actually worked. Except for a rather serious case of cat allergy. But I wouldn't worry about it. I'm pretty sure those unfortunate little furballs have more or less gone extinct these days. Oh, great. I don't suppose there's anything you could do to actually fix my cat allergy. I get headaches. My nose starts running and my cheeks get all rosy. Ah, a case of the rosy cheeks, eh? Hmm, I'm afraid you're asking a bit too much of modern medicine, Special Agent QP43. But since you special agents have the luxury of time travel, maybe you could go back in time and make it so that cats never had fur to begin with. That's a strange and perplexing thought, Dr. DR13. Yes, I know. It doesn't seem very feasible now, does it? So are you sure you've got this thing working now? Pretty sure. I can't believe it. We're actually about to get an audience with the Pythonic Patriarch himself. Yeah, he's okay, I guess. Okay? What did you call our ruler, Lonely Intern Lake? Relax, dude. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy! Okay, this had better be worth the trip, lab rats. Patriarch, we are honored by your presence. Honored, sir. Yeah, yeah. Will someone just tell me what this whatchamacallit does again? Well, the Invertatron is capable of inverting any solvent or liquid into its molecular antithesis. That is to say, it negates the atomic polarities of any matter you put into it. Hmm. Let me see if I've got this straight. Are you telling me that if I put tea into that thing... I get coffee? Not really, no. Whatever you put into the Invertatron will have its effect inverted on a molecular level. Meaning? You would get anti-tea, sir. Anti-tea, huh? Hmm. Brilliant! I'm sure I can come up with a bunch of malicious scenarios for changing the effect of various stuff. Oh, I can see it now. This turning into that, and then back again to that which it once was. Which is to say, this. Or was it? Maybe that. Genius, sir. Yes, genius. Okay, let's make it official and slap a trademark on it. The stuff changer is now ready for business. Uh... We have been calling it the Invertatron, sir. Sure, whatever. Just slap a trademark on it is all.
You think this thing will work with hair growth cream? I don't see why not, sir. You shall not be disappointed, sir. We'll invert the living daylight out of that hair growth cream for you, sir. Okay, let's try it out. Fascinating. Every molecule of the cream has been inverted. The Empire is now in possession of the most effective hair removal cream in the known universe. Strong enough to reprogram the very genetic structure of any organic material it might come into contact with. Made sure of the Empire well. Yes, quite. Boy, I'd better be careful putting it back in the can. Cool. The syringe is now filled with anti-hair growth cream. What? This whole thing? That's just my blowpipe, loaded with anti-hair growth cream. Ain't no biggie. Okay, kitty. This won't hurt a bit. Okie dokie. Now, let's just hope that the anti-hair growth formula will do its thing genetically speaking. Okay, enough procrastinating, Julia. Time to hit the books. You're not listening, KLO-1. There's no way I could gather up the cutter's task on my shelf. I don't suppose you could ask her for me? Hmm. You want me to ask Julia for a date on your behalf? In a nutshell, yes. Refuse and I shall wipe you out right now, KLO-1. Okay then, I guess. Oh, thank you ever so much, KLO-1. Nothing like covert operations to bring people together, eh? One for all, and all for one, and all that. Right. Now, if she agrees, and of course I shall destroy you both should she not, tell her I'll be waiting for her in the park. That park is ever so romantic. Okay, if you'll excuse me, I've got to get me one of those newspaper thingies. A newspaper? Yes. If Agent Ruthless has taught me anything, it's that no woman can resist a beheaded man about town casually flipping through a newspaper. Oh, this is exciting! Right. I just hope it won't be too awkward talking to Julia now that I've visited her apartment. Aw, oh, beautiful oligarch. Hmm. What was the problem with seeing Justin again? That's so odd. I could have sworn there was some sort of obvious deal breaker between us. I mean, other than his commitment issues and inability to express emotions, etc. Okay, oligarch, it's time we got Justin home already. You again, huh? Don't tell me. Our psychologist friend has run out of insect repellent again. Yes, he sent me out to pick up a new can. Word on the street is you've got some in stock. Well, I've got one, to be exact. I'll take it. Cool. Tell me something, though. What use does a robot psychologist have for insect repellent anyway? 
Well, let's just say it comes in very handy in the treatment of his patient. Something about those chemicals seems to interfere with our security matrix, blocking off our safeguards. It's effectively a truce serum for robots. Perfect for treating patients unconsciously, suppressing memories of childhood trauma and whatnot. A truth serum, huh? You robots are a strange bunch. Oh, you should hear the stuff his human patients bring up. You guys are the real freaks. Now, if I could only get hold of a rodent to take me back home. Something in between a mouse and a rabbit should do the trick. Hmm, like a squirrel or something? Were the adversaries, those? They're picky when it comes to their trees, though. They want them really tall, you know. In fact, I haven't seen any tree tall enough to attract squirrels around here. Interesting. Okay. I wonder if that Kloot guy has made any progress since we last spoke. Yeah, it was over-optimistic of me to think those plant food sticks would bring the plant back to life. I'll just take them out. Oops, it fell over. Well, coffee was cold anyway. Looks like someone's broken into the doorway. Who would do such a thing? Hi, Clute. Hey, Julia. Taking a break from your studies? Well, actually, I'm now ready to help get Justin back. Wow, that's great. Welcome to the co-op. If you have any items you need to pass along, I know a way. Ah, got it. So, what have you been up to lately? Made any progress? Well... I've done stuff. Various kinds of stuff. But we still haven't been able to get Justin back. And obviously, I'm still stuck in this time. No worries. I'm sure we'll be able to sort things out somehow. Hey, Julia. Hey, Clute. Hey, I like the cure too. Hmm. How did you know I like the cure? I... I guess you must have told me. So, anyway... I have a message for you. Oh, from Justin. No, actually, it's from Cutie. Who? You know, Cutie 40, robotic guy, always threatening to destroy everyone. Oh, that guy. Yeah. He wonders if you would be interested in going on another date. He said he'll be waiting for you in the park as soon as he could get hold of a newspaper. Hmm. That might actually be interesting. If you and I work together, maybe we can come up with a way to get him to spill the beans on how to get Justin home. Ah, I like it. Okay. Gotta remember to play it a real cool and nonchalant when Julia shows up. Cool and nonchalant, that's the ticket. Boy, I'm so nervous that I'm going to have to temporarily downclock my CPU a couple of hertz.
Uh, hi there. What's that now? I'm kind of busy reading my newspaper here. Being a man of the world and all that. Okay. Ah, Julia. It's you. I understand you had your heart set on a date, yeah? Let me stop you right there, Julia. I'm afraid a date just isn't doable at the moment. I'm a busy man, you know. Oh. Oh, yes. But I'll put you on the list. My receptionist will get in touch with you as soon as there's an opening in my romantic calendar. But Clute said you wanted to see me. Sorry, I'm not at a liberty to divulge any information about my fellow agents. Say that again. I have no comments regarding Agent KL01. Can we move on? Holy moly. So what's happening with Justin? Justin's whereabouts are classified information. Maybe you're not trusted with any of the top secret stuff. I'll have you know that I'm a special agent of the Pythonic Empire, and so I'm privy to a whole load of juicy Empire secrets. Prove it. Spill them. I think you underestimate the prowess of our security routines. That newspaper is really cool, QT40. Found it. You know what's even cooler than flipping through a newspaper, though? No such thing. I study under Ruthless himself, you know. Okay, so what's cooler then? Well, what's cooler than reading a newspaper is... Having one, but not actually reading it. Hmm. Like actually having one, but being too cool to even read it? Exactly. Oh, I never read them, Michelle. Talk to you later. <laughs> Aced it. Hi, Oliver. Good to see you back, Jules. What happened to all your barber stuff? Well, this funny-looking guy came by. Well, it's a long story. How long have you been working on that customer? Hey, you know me, Jules. I'm a perfectionist. I think my cyanide 300 hair dye needs a refill. I've got you covered, Jules. I've been keeping a bottle for you right there by the mirror. Talk to you later. Later, Jules. Enjoy, Julia. That bottle should tide you over until your next appointment. Great. Thank you, Oliver. Sure, I'll throw these in and make a wish. I'm not saying what the wish is, though. Oops. I think the bottom of that thing just fell out. Don't mind me. I'm just going to have a look where all them coins might have ended up. I sure hope I didn't mess up too badly here. Hey, B. Hey, Jules. So, tell me, who was that mechanical dude I saw you with earlier? Oh, don't get me started, B. It's been a long day. I know I should leave the salt for the other customers. It's just I know from experience that the chef here oversalts everything anyway.
You ask the impossible. I can't make head nor tail of how to combine these items. Boom shakalak. One pineapple USB stick ready to be used with old school computers. Nice, the cyanide 300 hair dye looks like a perfect match for the cyan slot. One water coming up. Got it. Water, a good start for any mix. Water and fuchsia, unmixed. OK, let's mix it up. Nice, I'm going to call it a fuchsia flusher. Wow, the fuchsia flusher looks perfect for the magenta slot. It reads, this thing is infected with some serious viruses. Don't touch. Yep, the computer stick contraption fits nicely in the computer slot. I think it's probably chock full of nasty viruses at this point. Nice. The printer is ready for business. Oh, before you leave, could I ask a favour? What's up? I've got this patient, a dino friend of mine. He's suffering from a bad case of constipation. Could you give him this brew for me? It should clear things right up. Will it be as effective as the strange brew? <sighs> Now, I'm not sure where he's at, but he shouldn't be too hard to find. No worries. I'll take care of it. Uh, excuse me in there. I don't mean to disturb you or anything. But Abraxas gave me this brew of prune juice. I'm thinking maybe it's for you? So maybe if I leave it by the door and just walk away for a while? Yeah, let's try that. OK? Agent QP43, Dr. DR22 will see you now. Calling Special Agent QP43. Hey, wanna stick around for a while? No? I guess not. Welcome back, Special Agent QP43. Dr. DR22 will see you in his office now. Step right in. Dr. DR22, I presume? Oh, you're back, Special Agent QP43. I am? I mean... Oh, yes. I'm back. How do you like my new human disguise? Impressive. 
Now, on the divan, please. Sure thing, Doc. Hmm, what was that sound I just heard? Oh, just a little insect repellent. I find it prevents my clients from consciously or unconsciously repressing things. It smells kind of toxic, no? To humans, perhaps. Ah, uh, cool. So, first of all, I'm talking to QP43, am I not? Affirmative. I'm QP43. So, let me guess. You want me to tell you about my motherboard, right? Not really. I mean, we do already know each other. Oh, right. So tell me, how is the revenge on your brother's murderer coming along? Oh, uh, uh fine, fine. But you haven't caught him yet, then? No, not quite yet, I'm afraid. I hope you find him soon. From what you told me of him during our last session, that man must be one shit individual. I suppose. Unless the culprit didn't have a choice. Compassion? That is most interesting. I fear we might be looking at some twisted algorithms mucking about in that matrix of yours, QP43. Oh, dear. Oh, yes. Some very twisted algorithms, indeed. In any event, it would not be uncommon for the brother of such a victim to be burning with rage, lusting for revenge, yes? Oh, live and let live. That's my motto. Oh dear, I do believe I must insist on a full kernel reboot, QP43. Not a full kernel reboot? Surely? Yes, nothing but a full kernel reboot to kick out the sentimental nonsense that has taken hold of your matrix, I'm afraid. I see. I trust you will initiate the procedure, yes? Oh, sure. Excellent. Good night, Special Agent QP43. Good night, DR22. QP43, your reboot status, please. Reboot completed. Excellent. I think that should do the trick. You are welcome to rise up, Special Agent QP43. Okay then, all systems normal again. All good, DR-22? Excellent. Now walk out the door and face the world, Special Agent. I'll be here if you need to talk. Oh, and should you be in the mood for some self-medication, feel free to borrow my insect repellent. Really? It won't put you out? No worries. I have a connect downtown. Nice. What kind of IT support technician would I be if I couldn't take care of a few bugs? Okay, the gloves just went from kind of sticky to insanely super sticky. It's the darndest thing, lab guy. I have a meeting at the secret floor, but I have totally forgotten how to get there. Well, the Patriarch has yet to give this lab guy access to that particular floor. But I have noticed a vague smell of beeswax whenever somebody goes down there. Beeswax? Yes, or something like that. I've never been able to understand why that is, though. Carry on. I take my orders directly from the Patriarch, thank you very much. Boom! 
Secret level unlocked. Hmm, it seems to require a passphrase to be opened. Ken sent me. No luck. <clears throat> Status report, please. Ah, there you are, QP43. Congratulations on your cunning disguise. For a while there, I was afraid you'd forgotten how to access the secret floor. Pfft. We special agents know our stuff. Of course. And you will be pleased to hear that no one else has tried to gain entrance to Room X. I just changed the password to a super duper secure one. Glad to hear it. Oh, and that Chrono Viper session you ordered, is that still on? Actually, we decided to postpone that session, just for a short while. Gah! I mean, I see, sir. Of course, sir. So, is the Chrono Viper all it's cracked up to be? Oh yes, the Chrono Viper 3, to be exact. Our best Chrono Viper yet. How's the battery time? Well, same as previous year's model, but it has tons of new features. Won't that just sap the power out of it more quickly? Yep. Our best Chrono Viper yet. Can this thing really wipe out every trace of someone's existence? From any timeline, in any universe, yes. Impressive. We don't call it the Pythonic Pride for nothing, sir. Listen, I have a proposition for you. Should I ever end up in that thing? What? Why would an agent of the Pythonic Empire wind up in the Chrono Viper? That's ludicrous. Well, most probably due to some perfectly innocent misunderstanding. Or perhaps through some twisted plot by infiltrators trying to take down the Empire from within. Go on. So, if that should happen, I will tell you a secret word. Something that will let you know it's me. So you can set me free, okay? Oh, a secret word. Intriguing. So what is it then? Okay. So the secret word is... Zakam attack. Okay. Got it. You can rely on me, Special Agent QP43. I will not let you down. Much appreciated, fellow Pythonian. Tell me more about Room X. Oh, we shouldn't speak about it out loud. It's so secret I can hardly even acknowledge that I'm the one responsible for the security around Room X. But yes, I am entrusted with the safety of the most secret room in the Empire. There's no denying it. I seem to have forgotten the passphrase for Room X. Oh? So, do you have it? Well, I do, but I'm afraid my security protocol won't let me divulge that information. I am sorry, sir. Carry on. Yes, sir. Immediately, sir. Whoa, what was that? Oh, that was just some moisture displacing spray. I'm giving everyone a spray to make sure we're all running at maximum performance. All part of the new maintenance plan you might have heard about. I see. Thank you. What an exhilarating feeling. <clears throat> Status report, please. Just let me know when you need me to fire up the Chrono Viper, sir. I seem to have forgotten the passphrase for Room X. Oh? So, do you have it? I do. And surprisingly, I feel I'm about to spill the beans about it. Go on. You mustn't laugh, though. It's a bit embarrassing, see? I got a bit hooked on this old TV series. Well, addicted, really. I have been seeing DR22 about it, as a matter of fact. Go on. The passphrase is Lorelei. Now you promise not to laugh. Hey. I don't judge my fellow Pythonians. Lorelei.
Okay, maybe using both of these mirrors, I could reflect the lasers somehow. Piece of cake. What now, KLO one? Well, I was thinking maybe you'd like some cologne for your date. Oh. Good thinking, KLO one. Hook me up. Hmm. What a strange sensation. I feel uh, different somehow. Yep, it's a powerful cologne. Yeah, I can feel that. Oh, Julia, I feel a need to tell you that I'm feeling extremely nervous. Maybe you're not trusted with any of the top secret stuff. Spill him. Okay, I guess I'm about to, actually. So, there's four of them. Secret one. The project name for the ongoing security operation regarding time travelers is Operation Chipmunk. Secret 2. How to access the top secret laboratory floor. Oh, the secret floor. I hear it holds the most cutting edge technology and the most prized possessions of the Empire. Access to it is slightly above my clearance level, but when people go there I notice that there's always a smell of either beeswax or sap in the air. Secret 3. Standard Pythonic Security Code. 4841. Updated yearly. Secret 4. Password to enter room X. Error. Clearance level failed. Talk to you later. Ah, oh, it felt good to get all that off my chest. Sure. I just hope it'll be worth it. I tightened up that bag real good. Okay, the soil looks a lot more fertile now. Okay, the acorn has been planted. I guess now we play the waiting game. Okay, I put the whole lot down. That should keep it healthy for a good long while. Whoa! A squirrel! Okay, let's give it a shot. Hey! I got it! Huh. What? I don't know, it just seemed surprisingly easy, no? Why? Why would it be any harder? 
No reason, just saying. Don't worry about him, little squirrel. I haven't had much luck with rodents so far, but I'm gonna take really good care of you, give you a proper name and everything. I'm gonna call you Sam, Little Sam Squirrel. I promise to keep you safe, Little Sam Squirrel. Oops. Called it. I wonder where Little Sam Squirrel went off to. I sure hope he's going to be all right. something. This is Lenny speaking. Could someone please ask the hipster looking hooligan in I1 to tone down the physical violence? Thank you. Sorry. Cool, the ball contained a little toy soldier. A little plastic toy soldier. Oh, the little helmet came off. One water, coming right up. Okay, one pair of bellows full of water, coming right up. It says the old robotics factory was abandoned in the year 7994. Stay out or suffer the consequences. Hmm, the real QP43 told me that the current year was 8021. This place has been closed for 27 years. Hmm, curious. I could have sworn that ventilation hatch was closed earlier. Let's find out what's going on. Uh-oh. Sounds like I set off an alarm or something. Which is surprising, given my graceful cat-like entrance. Oh dear, little Sammy Squirrel's gotten stuck up there. The screen reads, enter code or suffer the consequences. Phew, that did the trick. Maybe a spanner in the works, or a wrench in the gears, as it were. Let's see if this little helmet might help little Sam out. Okay, let's see if these bellows full of water might put out that fire.
Okay, let's hope for the best. Boom! Little Sam Squirrel is in the bin. Come here, Little Sam Squirrel. I know I had some bad luck with these rodents in the past, but I know Sam the Squirrel is going to take me home to Julia. The game is up, QB43. Or should I say, Justin? Oh no, a close talker. And also, what? You guys are no longer fooled by the name tag? We saw through that admittedly clever deception some time ago. Ah, oh, what tipped you off? Your general lack of ruthlessness. It was most disturbing for your co-workers to be exposed to. Oh, sorry about that. Yuck, there it is again. Ah! Uh, ah! Uh, ah! Uh. Will you stop being so unbearably melodramatic and in the presence of the Patriarch himself? The Patriarch is here? We do have that honor, yes. One Patriarch present. Welcome, Justin, to the successful conclusion of Operation Chipmunk. We've been monitoring your steps for quite a while now. And much as I anticipated, you walked right into the trap. Heck, you even fell for that acorn thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I see. Mm -hmm. Clever. I feel I must point out, though, that chipmunks and squirrels are totally not the same animal. Silence, you! Uh, look, I don't suppose we could all just sit down and talk this thing over, could we? Not likely. We've been waiting patiently to try out the latest chrono what you may call it. The chrono viper three, sure. Yeah, that thing. A wiping session? Yep, the lab rats speak very highly of this new model. It will wipe out any trace of you. From any timeline. Check. In any universe. And mate. What do you have to say about that, chump? I choose to face my destiny with a stoic calm. Nice try. We studied you, Justin, and we know that's so not your style. Patriarch one, jump to be wiped out, nil. It's go time! Yes, the recursive flux matrices just need a little time before they're fully initialized. Pythonic machinery does tend to require a surprising amount of initialization time, no? Oh, I can't wait for that snarky remark to be wiped out. Bring it on! This is Lenny speaking. If someone could stop coding AI robots and instead divert their attention to their actual job for a while, that would be great! Thank you! I'll never get the hang of AI programming while maintaining this dreary job. Maybe I could convince Lenny to hire an extra shop assistant to take over some of these menial tasks. Yes, that should give me ample time to enslave the universe. Hi, Lenny. This is Lenny speaking. Could someone please tell the applicant looking to fill the position of junior shop assistant that a proper job application is in order? With at least one former or current employer given as a reference. You think I have what it takes to work as a shop assistant? Challenge accepted. 
Thank you. Okay, I'll get cracking on that job application. It came out great. I even got a chance to reuse that old profile photo. Now to print this beauty. Sending to printer. And done. Nice. Now all I need is for a current or former employer to sign up as a referee. Would you mind signing this job application as a reference? So, didn't you just start working here? I did, but you know me, man about town and all that. I can totally hold down two jobs. I guess. But a word of advice, if you're really going to work at that corner shop, keep an eye on that blonde kid. I could never quite put my finger on it, but there's some kind of bad mojo around that one. Bad mojo? Noted. Thanks, boss. Hi, Lenny. I've got that job application signed and everything. Validating job application. Please hold. You still there, Lenny? Hmm. You really didn't have to print this thing in colour, you know. Anyway, welcome aboard, Clue. You are now officially part of Team Lenny. Go, Team Lenny! Go, Team Lenny! Yeah, yeah, whatever. So, what does it mean to be part of Team Lenny? Well, here's what you got to know. Whenever something happens around here, make sure to refer to it as happening in aisle one. Everything happens in aisle one. Got it. Other than that, just follow the instructions of the first shop assistant. Does he have a name, that guy? We just call him Kid around here. He's a tad on the grumpy side, but he's a real artist when it comes to using that mop. Hey, boss kid. Ah, lonely subordinate Clute. Reporting for duty. Do you need me to do anything? Well, just keep an eye on things. I'll let you know when I need you. Okie dokie. What are you working on there? Oh, nothing special. Just trying to learn AI programming so that I can one day build robots to conquer the world. Oh. That kid is definitely up to no good. Should I maybe find a way to put an end to his AI studies? Oops, that was clumsy of me. This is Lenny speaking. 
There's been an incident in aisle one. Staff to aisle one. Staff to aisle one. Bring them up, please. Thank you. Lonely subordinate Clute. Good thing you're here. Time to do your thing. I'll take care of it, boss kid. Mission accomplished. All good. Go Team Lenny! Go Team Lenny! Yeah, yeah, whatever. Oh, uh, I'm just going out on an errand. I'll be back, though. This is Lenny speaking. Could someone inform the new employee in aisle one that Team Lenny is very disappointed? Thank you. Oops, that was clumsy of me. This is Lenny speaking. There's been an incident in aisle one. Staff to aisle one. Staff to aisle one. Bring them up, please. Thank you. Lonely subordinate Clute. Clute, where are you at? Clute? I'll do it myself, then. And of course, it's always that same one floor tile. I hope this doesn't go against the spirit of Team Lenny or anything. Better not leave it in for too long. Now, where was I? Oh yeah, the taking over the world part. What the? Crapotulus! What the f*** is going on here? What just happened? Suddenly, the whole laboratory just disappeared. Not a trace of any agents or anything. It's like this whole Pythonic Empire thing never happened. Hey, lowly subordinate Clute. Yes, boss kid. You wouldn't happen to know why the computer suddenly got infected with an insane amount of viruses, would you? Right after I saw you fiddling with it? Oh, I was just making sure you weren't using spaces instead of tabs. Spaces instead of tabs, huh? Interesting. Very interesting. Hey, Clute. I've got a little job for you. That empty freezer needs a good scrubbing. Would you mind going over it and scrubbing every inch of it? From the inside? Okie doke, boss kid. Looks like this place has been flooded. Hey, stranger! Did you also come here for the coin? Well, it's a long story. 
Hey, no worries. Plenty of coins for everyone. I'm salty, by the way. Justin. Nice to meet you. I filled my pockets to the brim already. It's a new day for salty. Who's your friend? Oh, Bones. We've just met. His breath might not be what you call minty fresh, but he's a really good listener. Do you know what caused that flood? I do. Care to tell me? Well, I saw this young lady about to throw some change in the fountain. Oh, you wouldn't remember the colour of her hair, would you? I'd say her hair was blue. Really? Blue as in cyan, more specifically? I suppose. Julia! So anyway, I told her, listen, there's so many coins down there that one might just cause the whole bottom to fall out. To which she replied, if that were the case, she would gladly surrender any claim over said coins to me. Huh. Hmm. A good, solid, and most of all, legally binding conversation. That's what we had up there. Talk to you later, Salty. Mm-hmm. Hey, you. How did you end up here? Whoa, whoa, whoa! Hold it right there, mate. You leave Bones alone, you hear? Ain't no way you're gonna do something like that with my buddy Bones. Not while I'm still around, you hear? And I've got to say, that was a pretty monstrous thing of you to try. I mean, who does something like that? What's happening, Salty? What can I tell you? Me and Bones are having the time of our lives over here. I don't suppose you would be interested in visiting the past, would you? You suppose right, stranger. The past is what it is. I'm more of a forward-looking fella myself. Could I interest you in a second chance at a brighter future? A better future, huh? Was Salty as a man of wealth? Keep talking, stranger. Well, there's this rodent-powered time machine next door, and I've got a rabbit that can take you straight to the future. A time machine, huh? Now, see? That's something you don't hear every day. Yeah, I guess a new start for me and my newfound fortune might sound kinda interesting. But to muster up the courage for a ride like that, I might just need one last taste of salt water. Salt water? Hmm? It used to be something of a vice of mine. You know, before I came into some money. I'm not saying I'm nervous or anything. But it's not every day that I must to take a ride in a rodent-powered time machine, if you know what I'm saying. I do, I do. OK, I'll see what I can do. Actually, I'm pretty certain I'm going to slip on that thing if I try picking it up. That's strange. Some kind of trophy just popped up in my inventory. The plaque reads, For Outstanding Cowardice in Gameplay. Category, Banana Phobia. Signed, Dayla. What? Just because I'm smart enough not to risk my life for a banana peel? Poetry slam, huh? Count me in. Doubtful. You're saying you've got some good material? I'm not about to give away the prize of one small bunch of monies to just anyone, you know. Well, the poem I carry around may not be dynamite, but... Much as I thought. Come back when you're packing some heat, poetically speaking. Hey, B. Hey, Jules. So, tell me, who was that mechanical dude I saw you with earlier? Oh, don't get me started. B, it's been a long day.
So, that pet carrier. Real beauty, am I right? I'll let it go for. One small bunch of money! Ah, sorry, uh, got a bit carried away. I don't know, that seems a bit much. I'll have you know that I've seen a lot of interest in that thing lately. Okay, one salt water coming right up. Sure, I'll pour it out. Got it! Hey, I've got that salt water you asked for. Oh boy. Okay, let me have a shot of that. Then I'll be ready to meet that new future. Now, I don't suppose you're going to do anything beastly to my pal Bones after I leave, right? No. Ah, good. Now, I do have your word on that, right? Well, beastly is such a complex word to define. Is that so? You're a strange one, stranger. A strange one indeed. I prefer mildly eccentric myself. Oh, I bet you do. Good luck, Salty. I know you're going to be fine out there in the future. Maybe there's a sequel in there somewhere. Okay, come here, little buddy. Gotcha! If you can forgive me just this one last atrocity, old friend, then sorry to you too, Salty. I'm gonna need something to get past those nasties. If only Oligarch were here. Justin, finally! Julia! Don't worry, I'll find a way to cross that pit. Careful, Jules. As much as I'd like to see you again, there's some scary stuff living in that pit. So, this poetry slam, it's uh, on, yes? Any minute now, Serge. We just need a few more contenders. Pfft, contenders. You know Serge will just crush them, right? Crush them like I always do. I know, I know. I scoff at these so-called poets. They are just lambs to the slaughter to Serge, n'est-ce pas? I hear you, Serge. Let me guess, you're a poet, right? Well, I am the arbiter of the angst most existential. The bringer of the poetic justice to all those who oppose me in battle. Armed with poetic license to kill, thrill, and yes, then some still. In short, I am Serge. Julia. So, is that your poem on the table? Oui, and when Serge does battle, he don't bring no duds. 
He brings verbal jewels of a quality most supreme, uh, n'est-ce pas? You might say I pack the poetical heat. You look like you could use another drink. Well, red wine is indeed the lifeblood of my muse. Hey, bartender, another bottle of uh, lifeblood, uh, merci. Hmm, what now? Nice. I replaced it with that awful poem that Justin wrote. Eh? What was that? Oh, nothing. I was just rehearsing my poem. Pfft. Waste of time, Gilgus Blue Air. Waste of time. Later, Serge. Poetry slam, huh? Count me in. Doubtful. You are saying you've got some good material? Oh, I've got the winning poem right here. Hmm. Let's find out. Thank you, thank you. Now, defending his championship title, the master, the poetic powerhouse, our reigning poetic patron, Serge. Merci beaucoup, merci beaucoup. I present to you my latest work of passion, fresh from the fiery pencil of Serge. Mille tonnerre! Serge, he has been a victim of a sabotage. Problem, Serge? No, no, monsieur. Uh, maybe with my uh, superior phrasing, I can win this still. <clears throat> Julie, Julie, don't be so cruelly. Mm -hmm. Come back to Justine, the one to put your... Yes? Trust in. Oh golly, how far the mighty have fallen. Hey, make the bouncer. I've got some rubbish that needs thrown out over here. Now, someone who assures me she has brought some dynamite poetry for you all. I give you Julia. Uh, thank you, thank you. Uh-oh. Problem? Well, my hands are a bit sweaty. Some of the ink has gotten a bit smudged. I guess I'm going to have to wing it a bit now and then. You better sort this out, Julia. I don't suffer fools on my stage, you know. <clears throat> I give you the seagull heart, fragments of a love forlorn. The sea may be green, the sea may be blue. I'm sticking to you. As I ponder your beauty, your beauty divine, am I too late? No. Just in time. Lost in a sea of scones and of brie, I gather my bearings and reach for my tea. I wrote you a letter, my precious and frail. Love may be blind. So I wrote it in Braille. Well, what do you know? We have a winner, ladies and gentlemen. Not bad, Julia. Now enjoy the reward. One small bunch of monies. Thanks. I bet that will come in handy.
I'd like that pet carrier, please. Here's a small bunch of monies for it. Deal! Oh, and by the way, all our sales are final. That has a nasty ring to it, the way you say it. OK, oligarch, in the carrier you go. No, don't make a fuss. Gotcha. These rats think they're so tough. Wait till they get a look at my fierce little tiger. OK, do your thing, oligarch. Make mummy proud. Oligarch, come back this instant. They're not that scary looking. Ish. I guess maybe Oligarch isn't quite the fierce tiger I was hoping for here. And now I've got to find him before I can do anything. But I don't think he's got very far. Et voila! OK, let's lower this thing down and hope something comes up. Hmm, looks like someone is fishing for something. Hmm, the tin is all oily and stinks of sardines. This is going to take all my ring tossing skills. Carumba! Well, at least it scared those rats away. Woohoo! Oligarch loves these. Yoohoo! Oligarch, I've got something for you. Here's some extra stinky sardines for you. Gotcha. I don't see how they go together. Don't worry, I'll find a way to cross that pit. Careful, Jules. As much as I'd like to see you again, there's some scary stuff living in that pit. There's no longer any need to. Justin. Eh, uh, you're not about to do anything rash now, are you? Well, I thought I might, actually. Piece of cake. Oh, Julia. Reunited at last, huh? I guess my invitation got lost in the post. Will you guys stop looking so surprised? I survived, OK? So, what happened? Well, as I saw my empire being swept into oblivion before my very eyes... Mm hmm It occurred to me that there might just be a way to save both this version of myself and the means to reverse this little coup of yours. But how? Will you stop interrupting me? I'm obviously getting to the how. I figured that if I wrapped myself and this whole cave in a chrono pocket, I should have everything I need. A chrono pocket? Yeah, a great Pythonic invention. Patent applied for and everything. Well, at least it used to be. So, 
this pocket thingy kept you safe? Oh, yes. It shields whatever is inside from any temporal disturbance outside the pocket. I see. But now that your empire has been thwarted and everything, I'm sure you've seen the light, yes? Eh, uh, there's a light? Sorry? What light would that be? Well, the one that inspires you to do good now that you know better. To work for the benefit of your fellow men and all that. Oh, sorry, no. <laughs> it's full speed ahead on enslaving the world again, I'm afraid. Oh. But how do you plan to get your empire back? Well, that's just it, you see. I just need to know exactly what you guys did to stage this little coup of yours. And then travel back in time and make sure to stop it. Should be easy peasy, provided I have the right information. I see. Actually, I'm a little sketchy on the details, to be honest. Save your breath, kid. I picked this place and time because I figured it's where you would both meet up. Not to mention, it also houses an Interotron device. And before you ask, yes, it's fully powered up too. Oh, crap. So, tell me how it happened. How did you guys cheat me of my empire? Hmm. Let's see just how sharp those edges are. Nice. Looks kind of hollow in there. So you managed to break free, huh? So what? Big whoop. To be honest, I don't think Justin knows as much about all this as you think. I'll be the one to determine that. Thank you very much. What's that hole in your armor? Oh, that thing. That's just for air conditioning purposes. Air conditioning? Yeah, I need clean air to make walking around in this thing half bearable. You see, this armored suit is a little larger than what my physique actually demands. I can pretty much fit in the torso part. Oh, I see. You try being the patriarch of an evil empire and see how long it takes you to start looking for some intimidating body armor. So you're that kid from the corner shop, huh? I may come from humble beginnings, but I built myself an empire, laying down the law through my superior AI-driven agents. What did you guys ever do, huh? Talking corner shop days with me. Thanks for the chat, I guess. Whatever. Bullseye! Hey, you guys smell something? I'm having a bit of an air conditioning emergency here! Holy crapodulous! That's a potent stench! But it's okay, I can keep it together. Hey, little buddy. I know you like mouldy cheese. Go get it, boy. Whoa! Something tickles! Is there something else inside this thing as well as me? I'm really struggling to keep control of the suit here. But it's okay. I can keep my cool. Just about... Go get that little mouse, Ollie. What the? What just happened? Preportulous, I'm losing motor control. Hey, guys. I don't know how you compromised my suit, but I know you're both behind this somehow. And just so you know, my revenge will be... ...unlike anything you could ever imagine! Now, 
If everyone could just calm down for a moment. Attaboy, oligarch. I knew you would jump out just in time. Yeah. Way to go, Ollie. So, want to help me out with this thing? Jules? Sure. There's just something I'd like to try before that. Uh-oh. So, we're really doing this, huh? Well, I figure that while you're still in that thing, we might as well make the most of it. Sure. I guess. The device is set to auto. I think that means it will let us know whenever you're not being honest. Okay, okay, okay. Fair enough. Let's go. Okay. So tell me, after all we've been through, how do you feel about me? Well, you know, right? Holy moly! Ouch. I think that means you weren't being honest. Right. Okay, let's try that again. Okay. So, how do you feel about me, Justin? So, how about those agents, huh? Pretty weak programming, right? Ouch! Yeah. Maybe we should stop this? No, 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 no. Let's try it one last time. All right. So, for the last time, Justin, how do you feel about me? I love... You, Julia. I love you, Julia. I love you too, Justin. Hey, I did it. I finally said it, Jules. You did, Justin. All it took was a few electric shocks and an interrogation device. But yeah, you finally managed to say it. Attention all shoppers, this is Benny. It seems like some sort of rodent has been chewing on a cable in aisle one, causing one of the freezers to lose power. But we'll get that sorted in no time. Thank you. Whoa, how long was I out for? Hi there, I'm Clute. Welcome, Clute. Anything I can help you with? Well... I guess a lot of things have changed, huh? Well, we have been redecorating the tablet shells. And that bozoid plant is kind of new. Thanks for noticing. Yeah, no problem, Benny. The weather's looking pretty good. Oh, yes. It's pretty great out there. I think I'll be on my way, then. Okie dokie. Do you mind if I bring Smiley? Who? That magnet on your freezer. We've been hanging out for a long time. Oh, you go right ahead, Clute. Thanks. Time to go, buddy.
that guy's gonna be all right. Thank you.